Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're continuing our run through the campaign of the revised core set for The Lord of the Rings, the card game, adventure living card game. Uh, and we're, we're going down uh, the uh, Anduin River, uh, if I'm saying that right. But yeah, that's what we're playing today. Scenario 2. Scenario 2 from that box. And we are going to play through five scenarios. We do have the little Darkness of Mirkwood pack or whatever it's called uh, that was released recently also. And we're going to continue to that. We may have a little trouble getting through the third scenario, but we might play it on easy. So stay tuned for that for the next episode. I have not scheduled it yet as of this point of us being live. But if you're looking for it, check the video description down below. There's a playlist link. I will add it to that playlist uh, when it's scheduled sometime later this week. And then you can join us at a reminder. Uh, but your best way to make sure you don't miss our future playthroughs of this campaign and future Lord of the Rings videos, um, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Best way to, best way to not miss a stream. All right. Hello, everybody in the live chat. Matouche, hello. Kate, Eileen, Orbit, Sean. Hello, hello, hello. Orbit, thank you for the decks again. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the updates. I did put the new deck list we're playing with, which is one card change. Um, but they're new. They're new. No, I'm just joking. They are linked down in the video description also. You just have to hit the show more button, expand it, and you'll see it in the information section. You can see Mel's deck, my deck. Uh, you can bring them up on ringsdb.com and look at them uh, to see what cards we're playing with today. And yeah, we're playing with the same decks. We just changed one card in Mel's deck, which was taking out uh, a leadership weenie and putting in uh, another Galadrium's Greeting, I think is what the card's called. The one that reduces two threat per player or six threat for one player. Uh, the Spirit card. I can't remember all the card games or card names. Uh, but yeah. And we're going to try uh, Journey Along the Anduin. Journey Along the Anduin. Is that how you say it? Anduin? Anduin? So yeah, there was some funny stuff in the last video, uh, episode one. Thank you everyone hitting the likes on that. It already hit like 120 something likes when I looked this morning. Crazy. That's crazy. Uh, for a game that's like not, like it's dead. Uh, they don't release new content, sort of. <laughs> Just repackaging. Uh, but the game that ended in late 2020, uh, for some reason people are interested in it. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Weird. What but a, we're interested in what it. What releasing a new course that and Amazon making a new TV show will do for a, a license, right? Um, and a game. So that's cool. So it's good to see that people care because I was like I've always been worried over the years of playing the game on the channel at all You know, even if they rebooted the core set for a second time or whatever um, Yeah, I didn't think people would care because Arkham Horror comes out shiny new stuff people move on Marvel Champion comes out a few more people move on other games life things new sparkly games that people are just showing off FFG moves on you know they start marketing stuff in your face and you're forgetting about the old stuff um but yeah here we are playing lord of the rings in 2022 mm -hmm. 11 years ish later than the release year and uh yeah people still care people still watching uh funny thing that happened in the video i noticed was the whole uh i had a slip and said legolas is my favorite character in game of thrones oh but, you said that yeah because it, <laughs> it was mentioned i posted the video on board game geek people mentioned it in the comments there and then today someone mentioned it in the comment on the video uh, so yeah, it, it's just because in my uh, copy of Game of Thrones, the book, uh, they put a misprint in there and Legolas is mentioned in there, so that's why I said that. Yeah, that's why. That's no, no, I obviously slipped up, but it's funny though. I, I didn't realize I did it, and then... People, I didn't even notice. Yeah, people caught it for sure. <laughs> that's funny. I meant Lord of the Rings, okay? Uh, I slip like that all the time. It's all good. L losing my mind. It, it happens. It happens. All right. Hello. hello. Okay, Matu just house ruled his mulligan rule that we talked about. Yeah, no one's really complaining about my comments about the mulligan rule, about saying it's like archaic, out of date, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but someone did say the game is meant to be grueling and hard and whatever. Uh, so the, the mulligan was designed to match that and make it grueling and punishing and hard or whatever. And I don't think that was the reason. I think they were just like, yeah, yeah, I'll just put this as the mulligan and they moved on and started working on the rest of the game. And, you know, they don't take the time to like no one. No one really analyzes the mulligan rule. I don't think too much in most games. They just kind of set it, forget it and move on. But if I was play testing that game over and over again. I would be like, all right. All right, guys, come on. We got to find a better way here. 
super annoying replaying the same scenario 16 times or, or gold fishing at the start uh, house ruling it trying to find the card you need to beat the scenario uh, yeah <laughs> Matouche says no one should play a 1990 mulligan rule I agree it is archaic yeah it is but it is funny it's like you know Lord of the Rings an old novel old IP you know, it's kind of like, um, it, it makes the game feel a little old, which I thought it, it would when we replayed it. It's a small thing. It's just a nitpick. It doesn't mean I don't love the game, but it is something I noticed. And I just wanted to say, like, when I you take a break from a game for, like, six, seven years, and you come back, after you played so many other games, uh, moving on, the, these kind of things stand out to you. Uh, I just noticed them. All right. Uh, Eileen says, just ordered the revised edition five hours ago. Can't wait till next week to be able to play. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, so I don't know what we should go over, but for anyone tuning into this video for the first time or the stream for the first time, uh, just to understand this is a new player time for new players to get in the game and stuff you know you might have bought the revised core set or don't know what we're talking about uh if you're looking for the core set this art right here is not it not it uh the one you're looking for is this one we're playing with the revised core set has enough for one to four players cards to start but if you're building serious tournament official decks to go play with your friends uh, it has enough cards in there for one player to have a full set you don't need to buy additional core sets like you did with this core set which didn't have enough cards to for one player to even have a full playset, super annoying, uh, cash grab, garbage, wasteful. Uh, I'm glad they're not doing that anymore. Um, so yeah, so we're playing two player obviously, but you can play this up to four players. Uh, if you're interested in it, you could pick up one of these core sets to try the game out if you find a used one or a cheap one or whatever. But uh, I recommend this one because it comes with the campaign mode added in. Yes, it's more expensive, but it'd probably be easier to sell it after if you didn't like the game. And one thing I noticed, and I've been saying it, and I want to be more clear about it, I've always complained about the third scenario in this campaign being super ridiculous, just used to sell uh, expansion content, because they made it the highest difficulty possible, is super unforgiving, it is beatable with the core set, um, but you literally need to play it 68,000 times, and then one of those times you might accidentally beat it because you accidentally revealed like the perfect cards at the perfect time to beat it. Um, it's not a great way to show your game off to new players by beating them over the head and then telling them, oh, if you want more cards to beat this scenario, go expand your collection. Stupid. Uh, but they included it in this core set, and I saw on Reddit someone brought it up saying, like, why did they include that in this rebooted core set? They should have fixed that scenario, toned it down, but they were kind of lazy, and just threw the same content in here. And that scenario wasn't doing the game any good. I guarantee that scenario has lost players that would have bought more content and would have played this game that then then it brought players into the game guaranteed so i was realizing we haven't got to it yet we're going to play that one next episode we'll talk more about it after like we i haven't played that scenario in like nine years probably I, I, but i just remember it being ridiculous but i did see someone online discussing that saying like it was a missed opportunity too bad fantasy flight games didn't like alter the third quest to be more new player friendly and ease them in Especially when they release that little pack to add two more scenarios to the campaign that are lower difficulty, but they come after the third scenario. So we're going to see how that goes. I'll talk more about it once we've played through it and see how it is. Maybe the campaign uh, cards kind of change the, it a little bit and make it a little easier. I don't know, but we'll find out. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But uh, it was just something I noticed today and thought was, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like they, they had the chance to change that or make a new third scenario. You know, or alter a few cards in it or something. Or add a couple cards, campaign cards to help you out. Maybe the boons and the scars do make it easier. I don't know. We'll find out. But, yeah, just something interesting. Yeah, it's like weird they had the opportunity there and they didn't take it. Uh... Oh, Ezra, that's true. If you want a full set of cards, I just mean for trying the game. It is This core set is a more expensive way if you were like, I'm not sure if I'll like it. I like to judge games after I try them a little bit. Best way is find a friend who has it or a board game store that has a board game night and find if somebody has it that can bring it and show it to you, teach you or whatever. Uh, if you need to actually physically play the game. But there's an online way to play the game uh, on like dragon cards or something. Uh, I, I guess Octagon is not being used anymore for it. But uh, oh man, brings back memories. Um, 
But there is an online way to play the game. Uh, if you just go to the, I know in the Lord of the Rings Reddit, they link to it in there. That's how I, I knew about it. Uh, if we can go LOTR LCG Reddit. Uh, this is where I found about, like, this is where I see they keep the updated things about the game. So if you go into the Reddit for this, uh, just go on the right here, uh, I think. Yeah, right here, there's, like, new player guides. Tons of information, right? The game's been out for, like, 10 or 11 years. Uh, so you can, 10 years, I guess, at this point. Just over 10 years. Uh, but you can check out a card database, whatever. But down here, there you go, Dragon Cards. It's, like, an online way to play the game. I recommend, like, you know... You're obviously not supporting the publisher or designer if you're playing on here, but it's a good way to try the game to see if it's for you, so you don't like waste any money, you know, because it's not for everybody. Um, and yeah, I, I, I've never used it. I probably never ever will. Um, but people are looking for players right now. If you want to play the Desert Crossing with Super Hippie, uh, they have two seats and they're waiting. Get in there. Play, play with Super Hippie. Uh, but you can create your own lobbies, and there's a tutorial video to watch. Uh, but just wanted to throw it out there. That's another way. If you can't find the revised course set, or you're not interested in, you know, you want to be a little less risky, and you, uh, our videos aren't doing it for you to know one way or the other, uh, you can dabble with it yourself. But you obviously have to learn the rules of the game. Um, so that's the other thing. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're playing today. But yeah, I was just saying it's a more expensive way to start the game. Rather than buying like a original core set or a used core set. Because you still get the idea of the game. There's enough cards in an old core set, used or new or whatever, discounted clearance, whatever, that you could try the game. Then of course, if you really want to get into it, you're going to have to buy a second one of those uh, to build some better decks or start buying tons of expansions. Uh, Kate saying there's also a tabletop simulator mod. I'm not sure what that is. I've never heard of Tabletop Simulator. N never heard of it. Uh, just kidding. Uh, sure, you can play on Tabletop Simulator if you want. But why the hell would you want to install software and modules and all that crap when you could just go on a, in a web browser and play a game in the web? No way, man. Web apps are where it's at. Get out of here, Kate, with your damn software. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but yeah, that's the easiest way to play. So if you're a new player and you're not down with technology, Click that link, you bring it up in a web browser, works on like any device that supports a, a web browser, I'm assuming, uh, you know, like a more recent web browser, of course, and it should work fine. Okay, uh, let's figure out what's happening today for the scenario. Uh, Can Jay, I also never heard of TTS or KDM, never heard of any of those things. They will never be mentioned again on this channel. And I may add them to the swear words in the YouTube chat algorithm bot mod thing just to block them from being brought up ever again. Stay out of my bank account, my friends. Stay out of it. Stay out of my wallet. Damn KDM. All right. Here we go. Let's see. Okay. Uh, that looks okay, right? I think so. Seem a little dark. I don't know. Says the exposure is all good, so I'm I'm gonna take it for being good. All right, uh, so here we are. We got set up again. Uh, so we don't know who first player is. Uh, let's do setup. Let's try to do it in kind of an order. Uh, because last time we forgot to draw our cards before we set everything up. But we've already played the scenario. I mean, we played it years ago. I still remembered some of it. It was hilarious. And then uh, we did play it the other day. We played it last night. Mm -hmm. Try the decks out. See if they're okay. If we need to tweak cards or not. Um, but we left it the way it is because we did okay. It's tight. It's tight, yeah. We're, we're gonna upset a few people with with one thing I noticed, and I, I noticed that I mentioned in the first episode was uh, again orbit. Thank you for the decks. This is nothing personal, but the fact that my deck is starting at thirty two threat, and if anyone's played the scenario before, uh, as soon as I saw him, I remembered. I had like nightmares instantly, PTSD from many many years ago learning this game. Uh, this is the game that basically determines whether you're like down with the game or not. If you play the scenario and get, get your, your head beat in and you're not willing to go back, change your heroes, change your deck, try again and play the scenario over a few times until so you figure it out and really get a handle on it, uh, this game's not for you. Walk away. Because <laughs> there's this guy right here. Filthy old hill troll. Excess combat damage dealt to the hill troll. Uh, 
sorry, excess damage damage dealt by the hill troll. So if you put a little chump blocker in front of him, uh, beyond the remaining hit point limit of the attack must be assigned as an increase to your threat. This guy hits for six, so he can like one shot a ton of heroes. He has 30 engagement check, which means we have no time to prepare for this guy. He, I'm at 32 threat. I don't think Mel has any cards to lower my threat that she could afford the first turn. Not first turn, no. Maybe, but this guy is going to engage me at least. Uh, no, no time to build up, no time to find the answers. He's just going to come in my face and start trying to kill elves, dwarves, or, or humans here, uh, or men, or whatever. Uh, my heroes. He's going to try to eat them alive. Or I throw a chump in front of him, and then my threat's boosting up, and there's encounter cards in here, treacheries, that are just going to rip me apart if my threat is too high. And I'm starting at 32. And that magical number after that, when I looked at some of these cards, was 35. Uh, for some of these treacheries, they're like, any player above 35 deals one damage to everybody. Stuff like that. There's some dirty, filthy stuff in here. So this scenario teaches players about uh, threat limits and engagement. And when to switch between combat focus and questing focus. It's a very good scenario for teaching the basics of the game. And this I remember. Uh, this one's really fun. This reminds me of the second scenario too. In um, the same way they designed Arkham Horror, the living card game. That second scenario is super fun, super replayable. Good way to show what the game's about. Good way to teach aspects of the game to new players. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. So we're going to play this today. And it may not just be one time. And I am totally okay with not only is there one of these jerk faces. Not only is there just one. Hold on. Hold on. And, and this is the thing. The scenario starts by throwing this guy in our face right away. There's no spoiler. It just happens. Yeah, he starts uh, in play. There's a second one in the deck playing normal difficulty. If you're playing on easy, you remove every card with a little gold ring around the bottom right there. Or center right. So we would only have one if we play this on easy. We're playing it on standard. We think we'll be okay. We've played it a couple times. We only lost one Once, time. The first I, time. The first time. We won two times, I think, practicing with these decks before the other day. Um, Orbit tried the decks out that he built for us uh, four times. <laughs> one every time. One time was close, he said. So... But he's probably way more experienced with it than we are uh, with the game in general and the deck. So, uh, so we'll see. But we got to figure out. We're gonna we're gonna take it slow. We're gonna draw our cards. We're gonna figure out if we have answers for this hill troll right away. Um, and that's how we're gonna handle it. The rest hopefully just works out. But we like if you can't deal with this hill troll right away, the game's over. Like, and if you get two hill trolls right away, game's over. Like we're just gonna scoop. So I am I am okay if we just like see two hill trolls. I'm instantly resetting. There's no point in even wasting everyone's time trying to. Trying to win that one. We'll have all, all our heroes will be dead like within two turns. It'll be yeah, crazy. That's no fun for anyone. Yeah, no thanks. Ezra says this is my most played quest. Amazing. It's fun, right? Like it's a really fun one. It's fun. And I think the I think the variability, like the randomness of what could happen in here, is is very crazy. Like you could on setup draw the hill troll and then not need to go find one, and you have less cards to start with. And later, we have to draw like extra encounter cards and stuff. And based on that time, what gets pulled could totally change how difficult the scenario is. It's kind of crazy um, what can happen uh, and how different it can feel. And all of, obviously, if you have the tools or not show up and somebody's just got to work your way around it. But it is very crazy. Good scenario, I think, to test some decks against and stuff because it does so much with combat and so much with questing. Uh, the two like main aspects of the game. Um, so you can kind of test to see if you can handle those things. Ezra does say, I've beaten the two hill troll start, but not with core decks. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I forgot to clarify. We are playing with only cards from the revised core set. That's it. Yeah. No starter decks, which aren't out yet, uh, which we will eventually incorporate those in. Uh, I do have uh, cards for the first like many cycles and saga boxes and all this, but we're not pulling from that. No. I'm literally playing like we just got into the game. We're only playing with revised core set core pool. Uh, no two core derived core sets to get extra cards or anything like that. Um, that's what we're playing with. So, yes, that's why I'm saying if we see two hill trolls, I, I'm scooping. I, yeah, I don't care. We've already decided that. We don't have enough uh, green heroes, lore heroes in play to afford a multiple forest snares to snap those trolls down. Not turn one. Or not even, yeah. Not at all. Not at all. You, you only earn one resource on your, your lore hero. If you had three lore heroes, or you had two and I had one, you know, maybe we could build enough money to trap one, deal with one of the trolls, get the other one going, trap it, yeah. or use some feints to block it. Um, 
but we'll see. We'll see. I'm just going to shuffle this up good. Uh, I hope we see the Hill Troll on the first cards, but uh, we will do our, our uh, card draw first, right? Just want to make sure we're doing this right. Shuffle the decks, okay? So I'm shuffling the deck right now, doing step one. I'll, I still have to shuffle my own deck, I guess. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. I a probably did one. it already, but I just want to make sure I did it. Okay, so the scenario deck is shuffled for now. We'll have to shuffle it again once we search through it or whatever. Okay, uh, place heroes in starting threat. I'm starting at 32 threat. Okay, 32 threat. I started at 27. Uh, okay. Thanks, Orbit. <laughs> All right, we created our token banks. Yeah. Thanks again to Game Trays for the token banks. Links in the video description. Uh, All right. Dan was asking if there's any chance of switching the red with the green in the middle to have red, green, red, green. But No, I can't green, do red, that. Green, I got in right? trouble last time for not having all green trays. But then I kept this red one just to be a troll. But it's because the green is not a perfectly divided in half. So it makes good for the, the normal tokens and then a few threes and fives jammed in there, okay? Because you, you barely kind of interact with those playing a two-player. Uh... And then here, I have just kind of a mix in both trays because this is my side and I needed a half and half so I could grab damage and resources. Uh, so that's why I'm not using the green. Only greens I have are like not divided 50-50. The reds I have, I think I have another color that are 50-50, but sorry. That's just the way it's gotta work, I'm sorry. Too bad for you. Uh, all right, determine the first player. Oh, who should go first in this one? Like, if the hill troll's there, I'm going to engage him no matter what, yeah. I think. Unless you somehow had a chump blocker, but then no, I can't, we can't attack it I don't for have sure. any one cost, I don't think, chump blockers. Okay. So maybe I should just go first. Unless there's some kind of traveling stuff with first player doing some things. Discarding cards, but I guess we don't know until we draw. Which we mm. haven't drawn yet, so we don't know. I uh, I'll just go first, okay, I okay. guess. I don't know if there's, if anyone knows, is there some reason that, you know... There is the questing thing with Theodred, right? If you're questing first, you but I need depend. Yeah, but we don't know what's in my hand. Yep. To know if I need to but give the resources way, to you or me. But this way, I go first. Yeah, my character's so in the, the quest, option. so Theodred can give resources over to my side if needed. If needed, yeah. If we go the other way around, you're first. There's no chance of that happening on the first turn. Yeah. Okay. I like this idea. I think that's okay. like there's so many reasons you could say first or second, um, but I think I'll just try it. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the next one we'll try you. Sure. All right. So then we draw our starting hands, and then we can do all the quest stuff and the campaign setup stuff. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, I gotta shuffle my deck again. I forgot. Ah! So I can attach this to a hero, discard a card from your hand to give attached hero plus one defense or willpower. Okay. Oh, I did get... But Only takes, I like... had enough resources to get Rob's threat down right off the bat. Yeah, but you could do it... Uh, yeah, it's too late, so we can't stop the hill troll from engaging me unless somehow you got those resources before the planning phase. Cancel when revealed effect, so I can cancel a treachery. You could do it if if you had the Surt of Gondor, right? Yeah, Is it I don't. No, no, but then you can't afford to put that in play yet, right? No. Oh, I do have a one-cost chump blocker. I didn't, oh. I didn't know that. The only problem is that guy's only taking one soak, so then you would, yeah. your threat would go up by five. I know. Just from one attack by the hill troll, and most likely he'll get two off if we can't kill him quick enough with like a quick strike or something. And then these guys are just ch chump blockers from either side. Mm. This uh, this hammersmith though can return the topmost attachment from any player's discard pile to their hand. So looking at this, so it's cool you have a test of will. It's cool you have uh, threat reduction. But I want to look at what you have before you don't I make have, any decision. But you don't have expected unexpected courage. You nope. don't have steward of Gondor for for money. No. Nope. To fuel the deck. Um, what else? You know, for, <sighs> no forest snare if, if we even care to try to trap the troll. Yeah. But you do have lots of allies, so you could eventually help defend. Yeah, second turn, I can get some allies out there. And some quests, which questing obviously is helpful. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see what I get yeah, to I'm before. Yeah, I'm going to see, because we want to decide together. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to work together on this. I'll reveal my cards to here. And, uh, okay. So let's see what Sorry, I get. I'm... Citadel plate, amazing. If I okay. get that on Gimli, we can keep alive a little longer, especially with the enemies. Uh, there's a goblin that snipes from the staging area that does damage. Uh, there is obviously the big enemies that smash. If I use Gimli for defense, he can survive maybe. But it's going to take two turns to get that out, assuming Gimli survives. We got Bjorn. Oh. 
If I can get, sneak, get attack, sneak attack, if I can get sneak attack, he is great for defending against the hill troll, at least for a round. Okay, so far yours is okay. I got Blade Mastery. Choose a character until the end of the phase. That character gains plus one attack and plus one defense. That could help with him defending against the hill troll, even if he gets a uh, shadow card. Yeah, because I don't have any cancel shadow. Yeah, you not having cancel shadow means I don't want to defend with anybody against the hill troll, but that's scary stuff. Uh, Valiant Sacrifice after an ally card leaves play, and that could be a uh, sneak attack bouncing someone back. Or, uh, yeah, sneak attack. Uh, I draw two cards, or controller draws two cards. For Gondor, I won't have the money unless... You Unless buff I this buff, guy, yeah. you give this guy extra money, but this could uh, give all characters plus one attack. This could be... That could be the killer. That could be the way we have enough attack on this side of the table to kill the hill troll. Right, I okay. think, because... Oh, no, wait, Gimli would be defending. Yeah, and you don't have a way to ready him back up. Not currently, but I can discard my hand and try... Okay, one more card. Uh, this will help us requesting in the long run, because oh, yeah, we can slap good. this on, like, Aowen or something, uh, and she can have extra willpower. But that's going to take some time. That's like secondary right now. Yeah. First, first quest is all combat, all hill troll, other enemies. We're dealing with combat. We're dealing with combat. So, so I, I'm feeling like I don't have a feint here to stop the hill troll for attacking from one round, but I have ways to take the hit ish with this blade mastery. And I could I could mulligan looking, but unexpected courage. I would still not be able to play first round because it's two. Yeah. True. Unless I got... Oh, true, true. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. But I can still... I can still mulligan looking for a shadow cancel, looking for unexpected courage. Mm. The other thing is, I think they're zero, is the cards that buff Mendor. Yeah, buffing Mendor would be good for so the attack back. Especially on the back. attack back. So right now we know Hill Troll. We saw him. We know he has three health. Yeah. Uh, or no, three defense, sorry. Three defense. Is it nine health? Nine yeah, health, nine yeah. health. So twelve total attack at once to kill him. But right now, if I used all my characters, but obviously we need to defend against a hit because I have no way of stopping the hit right now. Yeah. You have no way of stopping the hit. Uh, means Gimli's defending right well, now. Well, I have one way to stop the hit, if but I'm not first player, so like he can take, and I'll just I'll increase my threat. Well, that's kind of sucky because then who's fighting him back? Just your guys? Oh yeah. Which no. I do have ways of buffing your guys. No, my guys aren't enough. Yeah. So I would like to get Gimli uh, lifted up, but I don't have a quick strike then on the second turn because we won't get to kill the hill troll, I don't think, because three, four, five, six, seven, plus for Gondor, seven is eight, nine, ten. You'd be one shy. Two shy, two shy. to kill the hill troll. Yeah, on the first turn. So hill troll's not dying that I can see. Okay, I can mulligan. Yeah. Okay. Let me mulligan, see what happens, sure. and then you can... I'm sure I have to choose mulligan or not first. Uh, oh, not yeah, having true. a feint is like what's killing me. I'd rather just stop the hill troll from attacking for one round, so then I can get a chump out in front of him. But, uh, yeah. I think that's the way we'll play this one. But again, Gimli will be close to death, if not dead, from the hill troll's attack. So I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, Kevin. I know we had that card. I'm assuming I put it in. The Lingering Venom, right? Should be there, because I'm pretty sure I just like left it on the table and we threw it in. Because I don't know where I would have put that card after. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, maybe I left it in the other... Like it got sorted out, maybe? Lingering Venom. Thank you, Kevin, for bringing that up. I totally forgot about that. Because Mel never wrote the campaign log out with what we need in the campaign pool. Did you yet put all the stuff on there? I put our, no. I put our yeah. names on the... So we need to put, like, our boons we have, who they're attached to, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, not yet, obviously, but the uh, anything that we got in the last scenario. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't think. Is I, it in that box there? Yeah, maybe. Um, Michael saying, uh, is the hill troll definitely coming out first turn? Yes. Yeah. If we don't draw him at the beginning, we have to search for him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's like lingering venom, but, like, it's not here. But in our, yeah. 
Uh, okay, hold on. Let me check the uh, collection. It, maybe it's stuck in another uh, encounter set. Like, I put it away, like, I don't know. Uh, so this is the first one. Let's see. Maybe it got left in here. Yeah, it did. Oh. You know why? Because it has the tree symbol on it. So just quickly sorting out the cards with the trees on them, it got left in the here. Yeah, yeah. Good catch, good catch. Interesting. Okay. We're trying to play on easy. Come on, Kevin. Yeah, we're trying to cheat, <laughs> Kevin. What the hell, man? Now we're really screwed. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll go over how the how the scenario works. We're just still going through setup and dealing and getting our cards and resolving Mulligan. So uh, hold your horses, hold your mounts. We'll get to uh, we'll get to how the campaign set up and the campaign or sorry the scenario set up and the campaign set up in a sec. We're just trying to do it in order this time. We didn't do it last stream for sure, but uh, we'll try to do it now. Orbit is saying you should Mulligan for Gondorian Spearman or Faint. I know I want Faint really bad, but the fact that I have a way to buff Gimli's defense. Yeah, that's. I should be able to pile damage on Gimli to have him ready, and then I hope for like a quick strike or something, or an ally can drop in. But right now I don't even have that, so like the second round I'm screwed. So I, I will, I could Mulligan for sure. I just see Citadel Plate and was like, ooh, but if we can't survive the Hill Troll, Citadel Plate's not doing anything. Do you have to decide before me? Yeah, but it's fine. We'll just do it. Who cares okay, about so that? Okay, so I can just show mine and then you can decide. No, or, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. One sec. One sec. Okay. Chris says that that card was with Lita. Oh, it was, yeah, yeah, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. <laughs> Anyone seen your Lingering Venom? I didn't get a Lingering Venom. Did you get a Lingering Venom? All right. Uh, okay. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, that looks good. I know, but the cool part about this mulligan is I could see all those cards again exactly the same because I shuffled them back in first. Or it could be worse. <laughs> we get nothing. And I get to keep none of them for sure. All right, well, uh, if you're going to shuffle yours, I will look at mine. Uh, so I got cancel when revealed again. Okay. Okay, this is not terrible for heal? this scenario. Choose a character, heal all damage from that character. So if somebody does take a big hit off the bat, uh, yeah, I got, Gimli could defend two turns in a row, is what you're saying? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I got this one again, so I can attach to buff someone's defense. Well, that's also better, too. I could put this on Gimli. You can then, if you defend with him, you can throw cards away to buff his defense. Up to three times per phase. It's an option. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy just lets us draw cards. We can exhaust him and draw a card. Okay. That's good. I got a quick strike. Sneak attack. A sneak attack. Sneak attack. And Gandalf. No. But I got uh, unexpected courage. Okay, so things are on my side are decent. Okay. Decent. Alright, here we go. I could draw into an ally that can I can sneak attack in. Here we go. First card is uh Weenie. Not bad for okay. blocking. Blocks three. Blocks for three. Possibly three. Possibly three. Well, at least three of the Hill Trolls. But again, shadow cards, I don't know. They could erase the Hill Trolls attack, so my threat goes through the roof anyway, even more. Or it could ignore the defense. I'm not sure if that's in this one. Blade of Gondolin, attacking an orc. Is, the the orcs are, is a troll an orc, yeah. are you about to say? Yeah, no, I obviously not. Say. Oh, okay. If I get sneak attack, I which wish I, I, could... I don't even know if I have in my deck. Uh, I, I think I do, but I I'm not sure. I wish I could sneak attack a character for you. It's like a Bjorn. Quick strike. Not going to help against the Hill Troll this round, but next round could be the finishing blow. Before he gets to attack twice in a row. Okay. Swift strike. Man, not, uh, no. That's not bad though. If you do use. And another we need to defend. Okay. So my yeah, not getting a feint is yeah, and now I have a way worse hand. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, I regret this mulligan big time. But if I attach. I do regret big time. Threat wise. But if I do attach this to Gimli. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We can be safer. We can be safer. And, and I can pitch like a swift strike or something. And I did get sneak attack. But I could, yeah. We'll and I see. get to draw, so we'll see. It's, it's so between not... quick strike and swift strike for that second round, we should prevent the hill troll from doing his attack and raising threat again. Right. We just need to first. But I might not have enough money because I have to get veteran axe hand in the first round, which is both their money to just defend against the hill troll. Yeah. And then and my threat get... goes up by at least three. Yeah. And then we attack back with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
which only six gets through. The, the troll is down to six left. Then with a quick strike from like from leg loss or mm -hmm. from what? I was gonna say if you you but you're not questing for me to give you no, money. No, then, yep. then a quick strike on the next round on the hill troll. Uh, the only problem is he's three defense, so none of these guys do anything to him. So I would need to have damage on Gimli a few damage. So quick strike doesn't really help, um, and swift strike would only do two damage on the defense. So the hill troll still doesn't die here. So uh, yeah, quick strike's useless unless I had four attack on somebody. Okay. And he's not an orc. Yeah, so we're kind of screwed. That is like a worse, worse scenario than the previous hand, because the previous hand I could raise the character's attack, and we could have got rid of the hill troll faster. Uh, but still, I'm not in that situation Which right we now. still might be able to get, because you're still going to draw one more card before we start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, if maybe. I see faint, amazing. Then we have uh, one turn where we don't have to worry about him hitting, and then I can use guys like, uh, well, I wouldn't have the money. To fight back, yeah. Too much red. Like, this is a very horrible hand, too much red. Like, no no purple. And, uh, yeah. It's a decent cost, though, but... Okay. Uh, so now let's talk about our quest. Uh, so we have our three stages. So, to the river. Emerging from Mirkwood Forest with an urgent message for Lady Gladriel, you must now make your way south along the Anduin River in order to reach the forest of Lorien. As you leave the forest behind, you notice that you are being pursued, and thus quicken your pace. Set up. Each player reveals one card from the top of the encounter deck and adds it to the staging area. First card. Uh, three threat. Two progress required. Stronghold of Dol Stronghold, Dol Guldur, travel. The first player must discard two cards from a hand to travel here, at random, to travel here. That's mm -hmm. annoying. That's annoying. And the second one. Not a hill troll. Not an encounter that does nothing. This sucks. Uh, if this is if this one leaves play, return to the top of the encounter deck instead of placing the discard pile. So this could like hold off enemies and bad cards from coming out by seeing this one over and over again. But again, it's sucking up three progress every single time, so it's going to make uh, questing harder. But it's only one threat in the staging area. Yeah, that's not the worst. We can kind of kind of ignore it a little bit, but okay. okay so no so additional can... enemies. But then here's the problem. Now when I flip this. As you approach the location of the small raft stashed at the riverbank, a fearsome hill troll emerges from behind the group of rocks and attacks! Ah. So when revealed, search the encounter deck for one hill troll if one was not already in play. So it would have been nice if we already saw him. That's the best case scenario. Because um, then we wouldn't have to do this. But now we have to place one in the staging area and then shuffle the encounter deck. And then players cannot defeat this one. It's eight progress required. We can't defeat it uh, while there's any hill trolls in play. And as I showed you before, there's two in the deck. Hopefully we don't see that second one before we get out of this situation, or, or C2 here very quickly, or we're in trouble. Yeah, we're in, and we'll in probably just trouble. reset. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to grab the hill troll. Let's see, was he the next card? Nope. Okay. Uh, was he the two on the bottom? Nope. Oh, all the treacheries. Oh, look at that. Would have been juicy, so nice. All the juicy treacheries were at the bottom. <laughs> well, there's one. Eh, whatever, we'll shuffle it up. Okay. So we have one hill troll. So here he is. He's, he's in play. And because I'm at 32 threat already, he is definitely engaging me or optionally engaging Mel if you want to pull him. Um, but yeah, I will, yeah, I'll just take him. He's hits for six, three defense, one threat. And uh, yeah, excess combat damage dealt by the hill troll. And it says damage that's dealt beyond the remaining hit points of the character damaged by this attack uh, must be assigned to increase your threat. And he's victory points. So once we defeat him, he goes to the victory display. We do not have to deal with him again until we see the other copy, if so. Uh, and he doesn't have a shadow card, so if the other one comes out as a shadow effect, that's great. So he goes in the staging area right now. So he's going to add one threat to our questing. And we're at five threats in the staging area at this point. And I'm just going to keep shuffling. Oh, well. All right. And then we're going to do our campaign card. Uh, if you're playing, uh, you are playing campaign mode, set up, put Mendor into play, and set each copy of Valor and Scarred, which I have them already set up here. Valor is set aside, it's a attachment, per, it's a boon, permanent limit one per hero, response after attached hero is declared as an attacker, exhaust Valor to heal one damage from attached hero, and deal one damage to the defending enemy. So it's a way to pass damage. Um, but of course, you have to be attacking to do that. It doesn't just automatically happen. So you have to have that hero with damage on it, ready to attack, do an attack, pass the damage over, but it kind of like gets through their defense. 
Then we have Scarred. Uh, this one is on objective. It's permanent. Limit one per hero. Forced. After a character you control is destroyed, raise your threat by one. Okay. So, how, why, why are we setting those aside? Well, because on here it says response. After a hill troll is defeated, each player attaches one set-aside copy of Valor to a hero they control if able. So that tells me if we see the second hill troll and defeat it, we can get all four copies of Valor that come with the core set out onto our characters. That's not terrible. But, but if, that is hard. Yeah. So you get rewarded for the punishment you have to deal with if you can do it. But if you can't handle that hill troll, it gets bad because forced. After a character is destroyed by a hill troll, each player attaches one set-aside copy of Scarred to a hero they control. Limit once per game on the second part. So at okay. least they let you possibly do this multiple times. But this one, it only happens once, thank thankfully. Okay. Because if that hill troll has just had two turns alive, killed two two weenies or whatever, to kill two heroes, um, you would we would get all four copies of Scarred that are included in the Rise score set out on four of our different heroes in play. That would be disgusting. And then our threat would be going up by two every time, each by two every time uh, we kill. So thankfully they don't do that. There's just four copies of Scarred, so if you're playing four, up to four players, thank you, designers. I appreciate it. And if same rules as last time for the campaign, if Mendor leaves play, uh, players lose the game. And here's a little Mendor buddy who is ranged. Recap, one, one, and one are his stats, three health. Uh, and the first player gains control of him, so he'll bounce back and forth. Response, after quest card's defeated, we need to ready Mendor. Then each player draws a card. Which I feel like we probably, we did it like maybe once last time. I don't know if we did it both times. I feel oh, like we you forgot. know what? He might have been ready already, but it's It's fine. Then, we still would have drawn cards. Yeah, we still would have drawn cards. Yeah, so we probably missed this ability once in the last scenario so if anyone watching pay attention help us not forget this uh when we complete quest cards because we're usually pretty excited we complete the quest and just move on and get ready we forget this guy's a little ability uh but if he leaves play you're moving from the game and then we know uh we lose okay so mendor you can't get too risky with mendor and we have cards in our deck one card each that helps buff mendor uh so that's pretty cool all right just want to quickly interrupt you to say, Brian says, Hi guys, recently found your channel watching your Aeons and Legacy playthrough, yeah. and I'm hooked. Nice. Welcome, Brian. Welcome. Stay tuned. We're going to have the second Aeons and Legacy box return. What is it? Legacy of Gravehold or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we got notifications saying that, uh, or an email saying our copies are on their way to Canada to be distributed soon. So I, I don't know what that means. If we're going to have it in a couple weeks or a couple months, I don't know. But uh, stay tuned to the channel. We're going to play that live on the channel. Um, yeah. At some point soon, hopefully. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So welcome, welcome, Brian. Thank you. Same. Okay. I'm excited for that. Okay. Uh, Do we have a chance here? I don't know. We we'll may. See. Let's see what we draw off the top first. So. Oh yeah. So. Let's uh, gain our three resources. So we're good to start in the resource phase. So each player draws one card. Holy <gasps> jeez. Oh my god. Holy, thank you. So uh, we are good. We are good. <laughs> Thank you, deck randomness shuffle gods, for putting this card on top of my deck. Yes. Combat action, choose an enemy, engage with a player. That enemy cannot attack a player this phase. So I can stop the Hiltro from attacking for one round. Uh, you know. One so round might be enough. It might be, but again, he's going to attack on the second round unless I can kill him. And right now I don't see that path, but. But let's. That's still. Let's, let's, be, let's be optimistic yeah. here because <sighs> that is a good pull. Yeah, that yeah. is a very good. Well, uh, no, we can maybe because uh, oh no, I wouldn't have the money to play the little guy for the attack. But if you know round. he's not going to attack, you could potentially put somebody in to questing that I can give money to if that will help you in the second round. Well, in the second round, I'm just defending with like a veteran axe hand, and okay. still my threat's going up, which is annoying. But okay. it's better. At least it's better. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I just got another guy that lets me draw cards or us to draw cards. Okay. Oh, we're not completely dead in the water. No. I guess. All right. Oh, I just also want to let you know that Justin is also in the chat. Hi, Justin. Justin, how are you? Are you voice typing in YouTube chat? Like, what's going on? Hey, buddy. I miss you, buddy. Yeah, we miss you, Justin. I don't even have to see to know that I want to play. <laughs> I know. I, yeah, we're teasing I, you. Sorry. I haven't talked ju why Justin hasn't been on the channel in a while, and we mention him every now and then because we used to play this game with him all the time, like weekends. Play with this guy, like he, you know, come over first thing Saturday morning. We, like I talked about this before, we played all day, 
multiple scenarios we're building tweaking decks taking breaks to eat and then like i'm sitting there with cards we're like changing cards out of our decks to replay the same scenario i was recording it online in ffg's database testing our scores changing our heroes then we play another scenario then you sleep over and we wake up the next day and play again just like crushing scenarios and then getting killed by scenarios so, so fun. fun and we never did it on stream it was like our way to get away from work and get away from uh youtubing and twitch streaming and all that stuff uh, but this game reminds me when I was rereading the revised corset rules I was thinking of our friend Justin and he he doesn't live too close to us. He's not far away Oh, he is definitely using voice to chat uh, So I guess that he says he, you know, he said in the chat. I didn't really want to ever say why he wasn't around um, it, it bothers me obviously buddy like it kills me um, but Justin uh, has some issues with his eyes and he's going through surgeries and stuff, so he has very poor vision right now. Uh, can't see out of one eye, I believe it is, at this state. So he's been going through multiple surgeries trying to deal with eyes, so he can't read cards and, and play games with us. Uh, and he's obviously talking through his phone or, or computer to type in the chat. But that's why Justin hasn't been playing, because uh, he literally can't play games right now. Which is like, if it was me, I, I don't know what I would do, because that's like my thing, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, That's very tough. It's very tough, um, and I hope you get better. I hope everything works out, Justin, and we can we can play games with you again and see you again. Well, you know, play see you on the channel. I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, have some fun again yeah. playing playing Lord of the Rings. So we miss you, buddy. We would love to be playing this three player right now. We're uh, glad you can listen to us yeah, playing yeah. it though. So now we can't talk bad about him anymore uh, if he's in the chat. Okay, so because he can hear us now. Damn it. Um, so yeah. Anyways. Just so you guys know, we don't hate him. We are not fighting with him or anything like that. That's why he's not here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, Steve, thank you for the Steve, super chat. Thank you very much. No comment attached. He's just a baller. Yeah, just dropped his money just, on the table just and walked away. Yep, just slammed down the money and said, take it. And then just walked away. Didn't even Steve, say anything. Thank you so much, Steve. Didn't even say take it. He just slammed it down and yeah. walked away. Like a boss. Thank you so much. <laughs> we appreciate it. All right. Bob is saying, though, if there had been a restroom break before that faint draw, then he would have said that was suspicious. That's why For we sure. do it live. That's why we do it live, so that yep. you can see fully. Yeah, we don't we don't cheat at this game like every other YouTuber that doesn't live stream. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to say that nobody has made those jokes before. If anyone is winning the third scenario <laughs> on a recorded video with the core set, uh, they're cheating and they're making cuts, guaranteed. Or they've recorded 75 playthroughs and then they only post the one they won. I, I uh, yeah. Cheaters. <laughs> I'm just I, joking. <laughs> I just quickly want to say to Justin, because I know you can't read the chat, but there's lots of kind words in the chat wishing you a speedy recovery and for you to just get better. So. Yeah, Jana says, uh, hey Justin, it's good to hear from you. Wishing you the best and hope you get well. Thoughts Kevin, and prayers from Orbit. Kevin above that also says, sending best wishes for speedy recovery yeah. to Justin. So, and then Kate's giving you a hug. So, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing uh, with Justin, how, how we, we communicate with him now. Uh, it's this very strange thing. So uh, I, I have my smartphone, right? And it has this cool feature I, I forgot it even had. Uh, you were able to like type in a series of numbers uh, and it connects to another device and you can talk and hear the other person. And you don't have to use a keyboard to type. <laughs> and it's crazy. It's like, like blew my mind. I, I didn't know that was a feature. I forgot all about it, um, but it was pretty neat. Uh, I was kind of blown away. So sometimes my phone starts making noises that aren't notifications or messages and emails and that kind of stuff. It makes these like ringing sounds and then or plays music and then I tap it and it starts a, a communication between us. Like you can hear the other person. Yeah, I can hear them. It, it's like insane. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's like not text. Like it, you don't have to read it. Like you actually use your ears. And and this is the crazy part. Mel showed me this cool thing. You can take the smartphone away from your ear where you normally need to listen to the person and you can put it on a table and then put on this thing called like speaker, uh, like speaker call or Yeah, and it plays it something. like out loud. Yeah, I mean. Everyone I, can hear it. I was blown away. I, I, yes, it was witchcraft, Kanji Sand or wizardry. I was like blown away when she showed me this. So cool. So Justin, thank you for reminding me that smartphones have this audio communication. I'm blown away. Yeah, but, you, uh, they're not only for texting and <laughs> searching away. social media. I didn't even know my <laughs> smartphone came with this feature. It was crazy. Oh, but Kate's saying, just don't tell everyone. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For telling everybody. It may not be on everybody's <laughs> smartphone. Just letting you know, my phone has it. My phone definitely has it. 
Yeah, our phones are good phones, so yeah. they have it, but maybe your phone doesn't. I don't know. So, yeah. Don't be <laughs> mad. Don't be mad if you try this and it doesn't work, okay? Don't be mad. You can also do the same thing uh, without a smartphone if you have two cans and some string. But I'll explain that. But you have that. to be close enough, I'll, right? No, I'll explain that. No, no, you have to have the string very tight. But I'll, I'll explain all that in a different video. I don't want to get into that rabbit hole now, how that all, all oh, works. Okay. But you can try that at, at home. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just also want to say one more thing before we could get going is Brian also says, it sounds like you guys have a great community here. Brian, you are now part of that community, so welcome. Welcome, Brian. Yes. For now you are, but... <laughs> You know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, sometimes some of the community members act like body, uh, bouncers and, you know, <laughs> if you don't like to eat the right foods, they might kick you out. So, I, yeah, just be careful. <laughs> be careful what you say. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, community is awesome. Yeah, I don't say it's that enough. awesome. Yeah. And lots of other content creators come here and they jelly, bro. They jelly. <laughs> they so jelly. Uh, anyways, okay. Uh, okay. So, you are first to. Uh, in planning. What's that? Right? You're first in planning. Planning. We're, we're playing now? <laughs> yeah, I think we're okay, good. Okay, we're playing. We play games on this channel too? <laughs> we do. Okay, we do. all right. Uh, so I need to save one money for sure uh, for faint. We know this. Faint needs to be just saving money for this. Yeah. Uh, so I can only spend one red money. And I could attach a blade of gondolin, but I need to save money also for playing this guy next turn or a swift strike next turn, maybe. Maybe. So I think I'm going to pass on spending anything because literally all my cards are red. Um, yeah. So that's that. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm saving my blue resource. And I want to get. Unless you let me play Veteran Axe Hand. Do we have a way to keep him alive? Yeah. Did you say? Oh, that one? Okay. That's, yeah. Okay, okay. So I won't. We'll play that risk of letting the Hill Troll attack Glimly. Or, oh, are you not or I could, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, he doesn't attack first turn. It's the second round I'm it's already thinking round. about. Yeah. Yes, never so mind. So I'm just trying to plan for the second round as well. So I want to yep. save one blue resource it's so fine. I can get Unexpected Courage out next turn. Yep, never mind. Oh. I also need a blue resource. Uh, sorry. Uh, what, what could happen instead is I play Veteran Axe Hand just for two extra attack. I don't know if that's enough. And then... I, oh, but then I have to quest with Gimli. Yeah, and I can't ready him and until we can't next ready him. turn. Never mind. Yeah, can't sometimes ready. Mel puts uh, Unexpected Courage on Gimli where I can ready him after questing, and then he has money, and I can do crazy things with uh, events from my hand, but uh, that's not happening right now. Yeah. So Which I, you play too many I do games. have, I just need yeah, one yeah. more not round. Not right now, not right now. Okay, okay. carry on, so carry on. Sorry. I, I would like, I'm thinking about putting the Protector on Gimli, because <laughs> this is just backup for you. Yeah, I, I'll right? do it. Yeah, 100%. Because then if something, if you get into a situation, you can just ditch cards to give you more Start defense. Start a card from your hand to give attached hero plus one defense or plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Which so, could have later when we need to quest hard right. uh, and not attack so much. Uh, I could use that on him right. also. But I think it, it, Three times per phase. Yeah, so you could give him three extra defense in a situation where he could die. You could just chuck your hand, right? Yeah. Can I do this after shadow cards are revealed? Uh, I use it when I put it on... Um, Eowyn, I do do it after we see the whole quest. Shadow cards are revealed in combat, Mel? Not questing? No, I know. I'm saying I do it after I see that result, so why couldn't you do it after? Well, it's a different phase and maybe different timing windows. Um, so, yeah. Or do I have to do it before I see a shadow card? Like, if I can do this after I see the shadow cards giving plus one or plus two attack or something, and then I can just pitch two cards to kind of negate that? Because you can do it three times per phase. Someone in the chat's got to know, so we don't have to look it up, but... Uh, yeah, I was just curious. Is there, is there an action window? I'll look it up if we don't get an answer. I'll, I'll look it up in the rulebook, see, but... Okay, just I curious. think that is all I'm going to play. Okay, yeah. Like, with the Hill Troll... You can I, use it after Shadow, says Oh, Shadow. okay, okay. Thanks, Shadow. That's what I thought. Yeah, I, I don't mind with the Hill Troll. Like, he's attacking for six. I could pitch you know, cards in yeah. advance. I know it's going over my defense. But yeah. some other enemies, I might not want to do that until I see it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's good. And then good. just can keep you alive a Sweet. little longer. Okay. Questing? Questing, yes. Um, You're first. I'll put in Aragorn. Spend a resource. Ready him back up. That is all. Okay, so I'll, two from me. Two. I'll put in four, five. Um, do you need? You don't need purple resource, right? What do you have? Yeah, I'd like blue. If yeah, I yeah, do blue okay. then. Just yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for his uh, ability, I'll give the resource to Eowyn. Yeah. So I'm putting in five, you're putting in two, so we have a total of seven. And that's only up two. Yeah. Uh, I could put in two more, but this lets us draw cards, which could be key. Yeah, uh, but we do have a handful no. of cards. Okay, but... I'll put in two more, sorry. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine total. The only problem is if we see an enemy, and then you need to take one, you literally have no way you're putting full damage on somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I can Sentinel block. Yeah. Uh, okay. No. Oh, we do have her card discard ability. We do. So maybe instead of putting that two in, we could do two from this, if you think, to try to even it out. Three, four, five. So we have five. Right now we're up two. Yeah, we're up two. We're up two. So we can add two more. Yeah, okay. We'll see. Let's just I mean, we it. could Let's... get really horrible, yeah. high threat stuff, but. That's true. Okay. Uh, when revealed, remove four progress tokens from the current quest. Oh, damn, they got yes. us. If there are fewer than four progress tokens on the quest, remove all progress tokens. Oh, oh damn it. Oh, man. Oh, no. They took all our progress. Not that card. Oh, yes. shoot. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, is that me? No, I readied. Uh, so deal one damage to each exhausted character. So no extra threats going in, which is nice. That's good. So we are up to. But you have to deal one damage here, one damage here. Yeah, I just have a cancel, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's, I don't think that's where two, I use it. No, no. We know there's other encounter cards that will do way more than just two little red tokens on the board. Yeah, yeah, here. Right. Uh, later, <laughs> that could kill heroes. And I don't have my card that brings that card back. So. Oh, also, uh, remember we looked at Valor, so if you attach to one of these characters and they're going to attack ever, you have damage to pass. Yeah, that's true. But again. Okay, that's good. And it didn't bring any extra enemies. Yeah, so, so we're up by things two. Things are okay. Do we pitch cards for more or do we just not care right no, now? No, I think we just don't care right now. Okay. So I'll just add two. Yep. I don't, um, I don't. Cool. Uh, engagement. Ill troll. Slap this here. I'm going to play Faint for one. So I'm going to choose an enemy, uh, engage with a player. That enemy cannot attack that player this phase. Okay. Uh, so I don't need to defend. Now attacks. Uh, is there something I had to play to get plus attack or anything? I don't think I have that anymore. Nope. Okay. So we're attacking for one, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. Three gets blocked. Six goes through. Do you need some threes? Uh, I got it. Okay, six damage on said hill troll. This gets discarded at the end of the phase. Oh, oh that's a good one. Yes. That's a good one to come out as a shadow card. Gone. This is a one of in the deck. Look at this guy. Attacks for four. Super filthy. Uh, okay. That's sweet. So far. That's the thing with this scenario. Uh, every card that gets revealed as a shadow card is like you're 99% happy because they're all horrible cards. <laughs> but some of them are one ofs and are super disgusting, and that's one of them. Okay. And the best one is, I think, the Hill Troll seeing it as a shadow card, but... Oh, we did skip travel. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. We could sorry. have traveled had we wanted to. Uh, uh, is one of them forced? This one. Oh, yeah. yeah. So these... So we're probably forced. If Banks the Anduin leaves play, returns the top... Uh, no. What? Oh, sorry. I just saw the forced. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. That's Do we want to travel that, though? Uh... Just to get it out? It's one threat, or first player is me. Uh, am I okay discarding two cards at random? I kind of am. If you are okay, I can replenish the two that you discard. It gets three threat out of the staging area. Yeah. And it's two, so it gets. Yeah. If uh, you do, I'll let you draw like, two once. You I get mean, to a yeah, it would be window. nice to throw like one of these guys in play, and like if I lose both, that sucks. But like a quick strike, swift strike, blade of gondolin. Oh, actually, a blade of gondolin would be pretty cool. I should have played that actually. Um, but yeah, I was saving because I thought maybe there'd be another enemy, and a quick strike would help. Now, who cares? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, sorry. Let's travel. So the first player must discard two cards from their hand at random to travel here. And travel, I just want to make sure that we would have... Yeah, questing would happen before travel. I would be discarding before faint. Oh, uh, yes, true. So then oh, I'm, so I'm then not no, going to do it. No, I'm not, no. We can't do it then. Yep, never mind. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we reround. I forgot. Yeah, nope. So we want to do this one. Putting it on the top of the deck and recycling yeah, sure. to stop other crap from coming out. Yeah. I don't know. Then we know, right? Sure. Okay. Sorry, then we did combat. So before refresh, I think there's an action phase right before I refresh is I'm going to let somebody draw two cards. Uh, so what are you still looking for? I'm looking for a Gandalf, a Gandalf. A Steward of Gondor. Yeah, I'm also looking for the Northern Tracker. Shadow Cancel. Shadow Cancel. Northern Tracker. The one that recurs my blue 
Yep. Cards. Okay, I, so I you're know. okay go if ahead. I go ahead? The only thing I'm missing is Citadel Plate at this point. Okay. So go ahead. I like... So, oh, reduce the threat. Okay, this that's is also amazing. what I'm looking for. Yep, that's great. And another, what, another cancel. cancel when revealed. Okay, so Sweet. that's good. So now we refresh all these. Okay, drawn a card. In sorry, just increasing my threat oh, by yeah, one. Increase threat. 33. Add some resources. One, two, three. Oh, I got Valiant Sacrifice. So if a character dies uh, or leaves, leaves play, uh, that controller can draw two cards. That's good. Okay, oh, cancel a shadow. Okay, there we're, we go. we're rolling here. You just need, oh, I you just do need have money, but you I want to reduce some threat. Okay, so now I'm taking money. Okay. Just filter. Because I also need to get unexpected. Oh, yeah, you're first joke. player. Oh, I'm first. Yep. Okay. So planning, unexpected courage. So I am spending two of this. Who, who's this happening here? I'm We're doing Gimli? Gimli, right? Yep. So, so then defend up and, and attack. Sure. Then you can, yeah. Otherwise, leg loss for multiple uh, progress flying out. But I think Gimli's pretty good. Because even if he gets beefed up, I can attack two different things with him, maybe. Or quest with him. And then have him readied up for attack or defense for combat. Okay. Um, oh. I think that's all I can do. I need the blue resources for all these cards. Sneak attack, I don't have anything to put in really. And then, yeah, some green resources. Okay, that's me done. Okay, uh, I'll spend two on a veteran axe hand. And I'll spend one on a blade of gondolin. And touch that to Legolas. So, blade of gondolin. Uh, besides having beautiful art, is uh, attached hero gets plus one attack when attacking an orc, which I'll forget. But more importantly, has an, a response here after attached hero attacks and destroys an enemy. Place one progress token on the current quest, which is something I tend to do a lot with this guy. But this might be a good on Gimli also. But then oh, it just I, split, spreads it out a little bit because he only has one restrict or he has no restricted attachments. And but if I see two citadel plates, then I have to toss it. But. I don't know. But giving plus one on an orc too when you do... I just don't know the orcs in this scenario if they have like that four damage, you know, one defense, three health kind of thing. Then this is good on Legolas. Because then he'll be attacking and can kill them now because he has plus one. But I, I don't even know if there's orcs in this scenario. I'm not sure. But either way, uh, I will use him to attack weenie enemies or together with big enemies. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Questing. Island on Legolas, yeah. So now Legolas can put three progress tokens out, and I can trigger those separately, so I can, you know, put some here, and then if that uh, explores, then I can put some on the quest. That's the plan, at least. All right, questing. We're putting in four, five. I'm going to give the resource to uh, Aowen because I, I want to be able to have some cancel options. So I'm questing for five... I want to let you draw a card, so I don't want to do this if I don't have to. We only have three in here, so yeah, I'm only going to put in five. Yeah, but we need to get through three, and then the rest can go here too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can do... I just want to have something standing just in case. If I do Aragorn, I, I kind of don't want to. I want to do this card draw thing, so I don't want to lose the resource to ready him back up. But then I'm worried about keeping him exhausted. Uh, but I will do Gimli. Um, and ready him back up with uh, Unexpected Courage. So that's two. So we're at seven. Four, five, six, seven. 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 So we're up four right now. I mean, if we don't finish this right off the bat, it's not the worst. I know. I have this guy to put progress out, too. So yeah, that's and fine. And I can discard cards. Okay. I have cards I can discard. Uh, what do we get? When revealed, each player raises their threat by one for each character. The control is not currently committed to the quest. So I have one, two, three that didn't commit. So my threat will go up to 36. Unless I cancel. I do have two when revealed that I can cancel. And your threat goes up by two? two. It's so up I'd be to at you. 30, you'd be at 36. That's I like want to reduce that's the threat. That's like you're reducing the, the threat yeah. the same. Um, actually, you're reducing threat more than uh, Gladrim's greeting. Yeah, so I'll spend one and I'll cancel that. Yeah, okay. I'm confident to do that because I still have another one. You know the worst thing, but I mean, high threat will lead to more damage later. Yeah, but then if I can... Oh, Kevin, I'm blaming you this on you. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin, you jerk. Uh, so, Surge, unfortunately, we're going to see another card. When revealed, each player must choose e uh, either exhaust each damaged character you control, which That's yours is already exhausted, okay. mine aren't damaged, or deal two damage to the hero you control with the most damage on it. So we'll choose the first one. Yeah. I think we could choose it if it does nothing, but we might not be allowed. 
I, for, I don't know with this game. I know some games let you do it, and some games say if it doesn't change the board state, you can't choose it. I mean, worst case. But either way, on the second one, I deal no damage to anybody. Oh, each player chooses. So you'd have to, you could put two damage on Gimli. Nobody has damage. But then nobody has damage, so you have so to choose could, one. So could I say Gimli is the one taking the damage? This is not the worst, because I do have a heal that I could heal Theodred. If I put it on him. You can choose whichever one you want. Oh, oh then okay. we'll just choose that, because my two so are already exhausted. Exhaust, yeah. And then I choose, I could choose the exhaust. Yeah. Uh, or I could purposely put two damage on Gimli so he starts actually getting some fight out of him. True. Uh, but that is a little risky because we see there's cards. But you are gonna put you are we you are gonna kill the troll hopefully this turn, right? But he still attacks and wipes this guy out and I go up by threat. I could leave Gimli to defend him instead. Oh yeah. And then he just gets damaged that way. So maybe I just do that. I'll choose the one that uh, does the whole exhaust. Yeah, it does nothing basically. Okay. Okay. Surge. And it surges to this card. Oh no. Oh no. Dol Goldor Beastmaster. Oh, he's, okay. And when he attacks, you deal him an extra shadow card. It's two threat to the staging area. 35, he engages us, which yeah, so I'm still at 33. We're both under that. Uh, okay. We have time. We have time. We, we can have leave a minute. Him. Okay. So again, we were at four, five, six, seven. There's five seven. in there. So we're up two. So two goes on the active location. Okay. That's good. All right. Um, travel. Obviously, we can't travel. Uh, engagement, uh, you want to optionally engage him? Mm, I don't. No. Okay, do I want to optionally engage him? I don't think so right now. I think we'll leave him. Um, unless I defend here, then this guy attacks for three, wipes this guy out, but I need, I need only, what do I need? Six offense here to kill this guy, which I have with two characters. But then he's defending, and then this guy would be dead from... Yeah, no. I think I I'll wait. I think it's worth it, yeah. Yeah, I'll wait. I could... Uh, do you want to draw two cards? Will that possibly change your... Dis uh, do I have a window here? Uh, we could just say you did it in the travel phase or something. Yeah, true. Oh, travel opportunity. Yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Oh, optional engagement, and then we do have a window, so... Sure. Uh... Okay, so you can draw two cards. Faint. Okay, I don't Wait have the money, money to play it, unfortunately. That sucks. And Swift Strike again. Okay, that's fine. But Faint can be used on this guy or whatever. Okay, that's good to have, though. Okay. I'm sure we'll see other enemies, too. Okay. Uh, so now... I will defend with Gimli. I do have a shadow cancel if this is terrible. Oh, okay. Just, I, I also can throw know. cards away for extra defense. Yeah, I have a shadow But I'm okay cancel. taking like three-ish damage on him, so maybe I'll still throw away one card to prevent. Shadow card is... Nothing. Oh, oh yes. yes. That's a great one. Evil yes. Storm. Look at this. Deal one damage to each character controlled by a character with threat of 35 or higher, which will screw us later. I had this card come up once, and this is one how we lost. Where it came up and Gimli had like one health left on him, and this came up late, and I was like in the near the end of the game, and it screwed me. Okay, uh, so uh, I could I'll pitch a swift strike just to add one defense, so only three is going through on Gimli for now, keeping him like two away from death. Yeah, until you get the plate. I need on Citadel him, right? plate or Valor maybe to pass some damage off. I I don't know how to do. I this. do have a heal, so I could give the heal to you. Okay, uh, and now fighty fight time. So I just need to attack for six. I will attack with these two. And we smoke this fool. So that's six. He blocks three. Three more get through. That adds up to nine. Hill troll going to the victory display. Uh, yeah, maybe we can just move that. and I'll make my victory display here. And no one can complain about red token containers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'll put it right. Here, I'll put my token container right there. <laughs> oh. All right, I'll just keep it off screen. That's fine. Okay, uh, so that's a victory display. One hill troll down. What happens when a hill troll is defeated? Well, nothing normally, but we are cool and we have the revised core set. Uh, so after a hill troll is defeated, and again, uh, because I defended with Gimli, my little chump guy didn't die, which means hill troll didn't raise my threat, which is awesome. 
And also, I don't take a scarred, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. We've never had this even though, before. Even though I wanted him to die, I was thinking, because I could draw cards with Valiant Sacrifice, but that's okay. Well, uh, we don't want but the scarred. response, which is optional, but I am going to trigger this. After Hill Troll is defeated, each player attaches one set-aside copy of Valor to a hero they control if able. So Valor again, for those who weren't here at the beginning, how dare you. Uh, response after attached hero is declared as an attacker, exhaust Valor, heal one damage from attached hero, and deal one damage to the defending enemy. So you can put that on one of your heroes. I get to put it on one of my heroes. Um, I always debate Legolas because the Gimli, sometimes I don't want the damage to leave because it adds to his strength. But you, it's optional. But then sometimes Legolas never gets damage on him because he's never defending. It just it does give you the buffer, though. If you do feel nervous, yeah, you can that's just true. get one off. I'm going to put it just for safety's sake on Gimli so I can move some damage off if I'm getting scared. Uh, and it gets right through their armor, too, so I don't know, but... Yeah. Sometimes it's maybe even just that damage you need to kill an enemy, right? Yeah, true. I don't know. Sure. Also, um, I think we get to put some progress, right? Because did like Legolas oh, yes. do some... So here's how I'm going to trigger it. Uh, so I'm going to do one from the Blade of Gondolin. Uh, that's just what it's called, right? So I'll do one here. This gets this uh, traveled. That goes to the top of the deck. If it leaves play, return it to the top of the encounter deck instead of placing it in the discard pile. So we know for sure so one we, threat. We know one threat is coming out next, okay. not an enemy or a treachery, which is nice that's good to for know. the first card. Uh, then I'm going to put the two from Legolas's ability on the active uh, quest. So we're out four. four out of eight? Yep. Okay. Okay. And now the hill troll's gone, so we could advance this if we get enough quests there, but we can take our time and continue to build up to get ready for what's ahead. I agree with the, Which, taking our time yeah, on a yeah. little bit, build up. Yeah, get some cards slightly. drawn, but again, we got to keep the enemies under control. We don't want to, we got to keep the, our staging area, I should say, under control and clear it out as best we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that was. So we're resetting. Yeah. Ready all your junk. Raise your threat. So my threat is going to 29. 34. I'm passing uh -oh. first player in Mendor to you. Yep. And then I'm going to get resources and draw a card. Two, three. Come on. Did I have the sneak attack? No, I didn't, right? I do. That was on my mulligan or something, right? Or no, you saw it. I just... Whoops. Blade Mastery. Plus one attack and defense uh, for the, till the end of the phase for a character. Okay. So much red. So much red. After you just play, I can choose a location, place one progress token on that location. Okay. Uh, and you're first in planning. Okay. Uh... Um, and I and Steve, who had uh, super chatted at five dollars earlier, says, "Sorry if I missed it, but do you ever do strategy slash how to play videos with FFGs? No, LCGs? Uh, we just mainly do live plays on the channel, and during those live plays, I talk out loud, discuss my thoughts. That's why our streams take like a year, <laughs> like eight hours to play a thirty-minute game because I literally go through every turn. We discuss stuff in the live chat as we play." So if you watch some of our previous videos for whatever else you're trying to figure out, go find like the earliest videos. I explain how the game works. I discuss strategy as we play through. We talk it out with other players of the channel. We keep our hands open so everyone can follow along uh, to help new players kind of understand. We take it slow. If you're there live, you can ask questions. There's people in the chat to help. Uh, but if you're watching later, just make sure you turn on the chat archive so you can see the chat as we're playing along. Because people will, awesome people in this community or just people who stop by uh, experienced players will be in the chat discussing strategy, dropping in rules, questions. They'll be looking things up. Um, so yeah, just just hang out. You'll learn that stuff. But I do not have any dedicated videos that are like concise and edited. Our jam here is like live streams are what we focus on. We do have some, you know, review video here and unboxing there. But like, you know, the main thing I wanted to fill in at the time when I started doing this, like eight, nine, ten years ago, whatever it was. Uh, now eight, I think, when we started doing it on Twitch and, and YouTube was uh, trying to do gameplay videos because there wasn't enough. And reviews, uh, it's based on someone's opinion, and they usually don't go into detail about the game. I could never trust that they played the game enough. And then when I learned games, I would find with some of these heavier games, I couldn't trust the review of the game because I realized they didn't really play it that much. They didn't look into FAQ. They didn't take it seriously. And I wanted to make content showing off these complex games or deep lifestyle strategy games uh, and, and show you how they work by example. And it was funny, around the same time, like, Rodney Smith, for example, from Watch It Played, fellow Canadian, uh, his channel's name Watch It Played, he also started filling the same gap in around the same time doing the whole idea of, let me show you how the game plays to complement all the review videos out there. It was just like, reviews, reviews, reviews were all you could find. 
But if you don't, like, you know, sometimes people just need to see a few turns work and see how the mechanics work to know, right? Just because someone tells you it's so great, you need to try this, it's the best experience ever. But it, there's things about the game that might not vibe with you if you don't see it actually run through some turns, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to fill out was making some content for games that nobody was covering that I wanted to, content for to watch myself. Um, so that's what we kind of stuck with. And now we do it more live. We used to do it more recorded, but uh, and only live every now and then when I had time. But that's what we do here. So yeah, there might, there's other channels that dedicate to these games. And I don't want to be a channel that's dedicated to one game going super deep and strategy and all that stuff. Uh, I've learned that kind of narrows you down. You will never expand your audience. You'll never grow. Your channel will def definitely die in the long run. It happens, okay? So I started out by wanting to make a channel dedicated to Game of Thrones games by Fantasy Flight Games. But of course, once Game of Thrones is not popular, once people move on, once they start getting into other games, once FFG stops marketing the game, and, and or they screw up the game, or they switch developers on the game, people leave in droves. And when a game dries up and nobody cares anymore, that means nobody's watching your content. That means what you're doing is now shrinking and declining. And that's not very motivating for you to keep going and, and make a, a, you know, a business or a life out of it, right? Uh, so I realized I can't just make a channel dedicated to one game. It just doesn't work because games don't last forever. Unless you're like Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Okay? Pokemon CCG. Okay? That just never seems to die. So there are exceptions to the rule. But an LCG, Fancy Flight Games doesn't handle LCGs correctly. They're still trying to figure it out. Uh, so I don't have trust in them as a publisher to have a game never end. <laughs> so I can't just... I'm basically putting an expiry date on my content if I'm only following one game. So yes, I can make strategy videos. But as soon as another pack comes out, new cards come out, it changes. Yes, so it may not be relevant it, anymore. Yeah, it's a constantly moving target. So... I just have fun. I'm trying to help players get into the game. After that, you know, you can find other blogs, podcasts, uh, videos focused on this game over the last 10 years. They do an amazing job. They dove so deep and they love making that content. I just can't do that because then I lose sight of the other games and I love experiencing new things and finding new things myself, showing new things to other players, new and old. And that's just how I've always done it. And that's, that's my like driving force. So that's why I don't do that. So there you go. And that was way more of an answer than you ever needed or ever <laughs> wanted. But hopefully that clears it up. So I always usually say we're playing this LCG casual. Uh, but I do take it very seriously. Yeah, but we definitely do. It's not the only thing I do. So I'm always like in the same week, I have to keep rules of like five different games in my head. And we always have multiple campaigns on the go. So I do not have the time to stay up on all the groups online, all the rules, all the FAQs, all the podcasts, all this stuff. So we have fans like you guys here that may be playing this game super hardcore, and this happens with every LCG, because I used to be one of these people. Uh, this is the only game you play. You play this with friends weekly. You play online on, on Octagon or Tabletop Simulator or Dragon Cards. You're, you're paying attention to every release that comes out. You're reading the new FAQ. You're in the Facebook screws, fighting over rules discussions. You're watching uh, videos of the developer live streaming previews of the game. I can't do that for every game, but there's people that do that and they get super deep and I'm jealous. Um, when you only focus on one game, it's very enriching. But I appreciate those people coming in the stream and helping us out and helping other people who are new kind of help them into the game and not gatekeep. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. But yeah, so hopefully that's... Uh, Yep, Steve says. So you're saying no. <laughs> not at this not at this time, Steve, no. But I think it was more asking about the how to play videos specifically. Yeah. Not necessarily even for FFG, but just for in general. Yeah, you I'm don't not, do how to play I, videos. I kind of in the first stream um, the other day went through like kind of how it works and kind of showed it through watching like how the flow works. Um, but there is a how to play out there. There's multiple how to plays probably that you can watch the rules. There's also, you know, the PDFs or the rule book if you want to read those before buying it or getting into it. Um, there's the FAQ if you're unsure about if card interactions and stuff, but, uh, yeah, the effort to put together how to play, especially a good quality one, uh, and a rules mistake free one is a quite a long project and I've started them before, but then I wouldn't be streaming for multiple weeks while I'm working on these how to plays. And then, you know, so it's hard to do like live streamings and, and how to plays all at the same time, but with like one or two people, but. Keith, Keith, thank you for becoming a producer and supporting the channel by clicking the join button. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, 
We do try, though, as best we can to talk through our turns and talk yeah. through how to play. We, we try to teach through example of play and discuss strategy and try to, like, give something to everyone that watches. And we love that in the live chat, you guys get involved with the, you know, the added tips, the corrections, the, you know, discussion, discussions on cards. Like, new, I love when new players are like, Rob, you can't do this. Or even experienced players come in and they're like, Mel, you can't do that. And then we, like, look it up and we find out it's not the way it works. It is the right way. And even that experienced player relearned something about the game they were playing wrong. Uh, especially when you play a game solo and you're not playing with other people, uh, you can make mistakes all the time and you, you don't think you are. It happens. I know this. <laughs> so it's fun when everyone gets together and we have the hive mind all working together on stream, um, which is awesome. But yeah. <laughs> oh, Keith, thank you so much. Keith says, yeah, I figured another $5 a month was fine to do this and Patreon. Keith, you're, you're And yeah. I wanted the cool perks. Oh, <laughs> Keith. You're so, so sweet. Now Keith has a little die beside his name. His yeah. name's green. He's now cooler than you. And uh, he's in the chat. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you, Keith. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, Dan also says, for people new to the channel, Rob's average answer time for questions is unofficially 12 minutes and 37 seconds. Thanks, marketing thanks, manager Dan. Dan Roberts. I appreciate yep, your thanks. help. Thanks for keeping that. Keeping uh, us on track here. Okay. <laughs> There's another problem doing it live. If you have a recorded video, why they're always shorter is because nobody comes in and starts interrupting you during it and you can edit it out. That's okay. People, uh, people love it. But yeah. That's why we're here, right? Take it or leave it. All uh, right. I don't know where we were. We reset. I don't, I'm thinking I'm in my planning. I think you're in your planning because I haven't planned yet. All right. Yeah, we're taking our time today's stream for sure. We really don't want to lose this, this as is a well. <laughs> this is also a difference. A weekend stream here for us. Usually we're not rushing unless we're playing a really long game and we have something we need to do after. Uh, but a weeknight, we usually try to be a little quicker getting into it and, and playing it. Yeah, because the uh, longer it goes, the more tired we but get. But today we are expecting if this doesn't go right, we'll play it again until we figure it out. So we're taking our time. But However, uh, I really want this to go right because so far uh, yeah. we're on a better track than we've been in any of our uh, attempts before. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I could play this little guy, but then I get worried about the whole one that came up with characters that aren't in the quest. It's just adding more. Oh yeah, more. the more people you have out. The... So I think that stops you from just spamming these dudes out. I mean, you can so hold, hold it. to him. I'm gonna hold it, because I also have faint ready in case I need that. Um... Oh, I also can quick strike this jerk. Uh, for five? It's not need enough, I need six. Okay. Oh, Valor moves one? Yeah. So then he needs... A, oh, but then I'm not but then you're at not five. Yeah. yeah, wow. So that's annoying. So I could raise his attack on a quick strike. So for two money, I can kill this guy before he even attacks us. That's not a terrible okay. thing. And that's, we know where, that's where I'm at. Okay, okay. so planning yeah, I'm done my planning. Done my planning. Need to keep those three. Just planning my whole turn out here and my money. I put... <sighs> I am just going to put out one weenie or one like chump blocker and he does have a response after snowborn scout enters play choose a location place one progress token on that location I think I'm going to do it on this one this is one where you have to discard cards at random and currently neither of us want to do that but if I could get that out of play like, I don't want to do that because I still have decent cards. Like, I still have my cancels and stuff I mean, in my I, hand. I could do it. It's not, like, the worst thing because three threat out of the staging area. But if I could, if I get another one of him, I can, or if I can get him back in play or something. Oh, Or oh, the other, no, it's, I was going to say I could quick strike him and then put him in next turn, but that doesn't seem like a good play just to get rid of three here. Uh, but then it saves two cards. Is that worth it? Gets yeah. three threat out of the staging area, like, right now? Like, you could do that on the quest phase. Oh, no. No, because I'd have to do it next never turn. Never mind, never mind. So yeah, I don't think planning, he wouldn't be back yet, right? Yeah, no. No. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm saving one more and I can reduce your threat. Oh, I can do it this round, actually, when I give her money. Okay, I think I'm done. All right. Uh, questing? Yeah. You're first. I'll uh, throw Aragorn in. Whoops. Aragorn in. <laughs> 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 and I'll spend one to ready Aragorn right back up. Uh, I will throw Gimli in and then do Unexpected Courage to ready him right back up. So I put two in. Or four, four. Go four, ahead. Four. Okay, I'm going to put another four, so we're at eight. Now and remember, know... I have a way to discard cards. Eight, so do I, I. I don't think we do that yet, though. I feel like the next quest card is when we're going to, like, 
like dump. Dump, dump, yeah, dump. dump it. To That's rush. why I also don't want to, because if I can draw Gandalf and I can get Gandalf yeah, in yeah. Okay. for questing. Okay, so so far we're at eight. We know there's five. We know one for sure is coming. Hold on one second, sorry. Uh, five, six. So we're at, that means we're up two. Okay, I'm going to put one more in so I can give a money to someone. Uh, again, I would love blue money if I can. Yeah, go take it. Okay. Yeah, we need to do the reduced threat. I'm at 34. Yeah. So even if we can do both of us by two or I just, just need me to by see, six. I just need to see, yeah. I need to see what happens with the cancels and then I'll be able to do okay. it this turn. Uh, okay, so sorry, where you're putting in four, eight, nine. nine. First card is the Banks of the Anduin. Wow, holy crap. <laughs> I didn't even know this was coming. So unexpected. <laughs> oh my God. It doesn't surge too. I love it. I love this card. It could just, yeah. man, keep putting it on the top all day. Oh no. It's Evil Storm. When revealed, deal one damage to each character controlled by each player with a threat of 35 or higher. Well, I'm at 34. 29. Thankfully. How many of those have gone Two. by? That's the second one. Oh, that so feels one good. More. Okay, okay. It's looking good so far. Okay. Okay. I think there's three. Oh. Maybe there's four. I, I don't even know, but there's more than two, I think. So nine. Uh, and we have six, so we're up three. Okay. Oh, I could discard one card. But do we want to get to the next one? Uh, do we want to? Do we want to? This is what we're at. We're at seven out of eight. Are we ready to like if quest we, like crazy? If we do, just let's just think about this for a minute. If we do, we can draw a card because Mendor will get rid of will get rid of the quest. Mendor will draw us both a card. Oh. I can. I'm down with rushing it. Let's let's do it. We only have one enemy. We can travel as well, so technically we'd only have one. I can deal with the enemy this round. Because it's going to draw what? Two? Oh, yeah. Two shadow cards it's going to no, draw? No, it does not none, I don't think. It just... We draw, we draw an extra one in the questing, or in the... It does do an extra one in the staging. Staging? I don't know. Let's just peek. I forget. Yeah, it just it just does the rule of blocking us from pulling uh, or blocking them from automatically engaging, and then one extra gets revealed next. I think that's fine. Quest. Yeah, it's the third one that then adds we have cards. Yeah, the third I think one that fine. just like plops a whole bunch. Because I would also like to do it potentially before another hill troll possibly comes out and we're stuck. Yeah. Oh, so, let's rush it. Let's, okay, so let's, I'll discard a card. I let's think. Let's blow through this thing. I'll just discard this guy because I have another one in my hand. So. That's what well, I, I could discard, discard cards. I know, but if that guy is, I already you, have you another one. But they could add quest in. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but I can't put two of them in at the same time anyways. Okay. All right. Whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. So we're at nine. Okay. Or I mean eight. So excuse me, eight. So we've now there's no hill troll in play. So officially, uh, we've completed the eight uh, needed on here. And it says players cannot defeat while they're in play. Uh, so that's gone. Do we do this first? Yep. And a response, after quest card is defeated, ready Mendor, period, he's ready. Then, each player draws a card. Bjorn, number two. Come on, man. Oh, second unexpected courage. Hello. Yes, please. Those are not unique, right? Sweet. No. Okay. get it on him. Uh, now, okay. we're on to 2A. After defeating the troll, you are able to board the raft and embark upon a river voyage. As you depart, your enemies pursue, harassing the small vessel as you attempt to navigate the river. As your enemies harass the raft, it is difficult to maintain balance and effectively fight them off. So 16, yes, you're seeing that, right? It's not your screen. Uh, 16 <laughs> to progress this one. Uh, so it's quest time. Forget combat. It's all about questing. It's all about questing. And now there's a special rule. It's a passive ability. Always, always on right now. Well, this is revealed. Reveal one additional card from the encounter deck for each quest phase. So now instead of revealing one per player, we're revealing a third card. Not to mention surging on top of that. Uh, do not make engagement checks during the encounter phase. Each player may still optionally engage one enemy. So what this is doing is we're on a raft, and while we're on this raft, the enemies are building up at the shoreline, and we can fight one of them here and one of them there, but like we can't just like grab them all and fight them because we're on a raft in the middle of the water. Very thematically cool, um, and that's where we're at. So 16 to progress through that. Okay, travel. And it makes it harder to quest because we're going to have extra things added to the staging area, which means it's going to get crazy. So we got to keep traveling and dealing with things as we go. Yeah, so do we want to travel to this one again yeah, to put it back on the top? Do, this is cool. I, I like this little idea of putting that back on the top. That doesn't usually happen this yeah, way. Yeah, we haven't been that lucky. Okay. All right, then engaging. Uh, okay. Uh, After shadow cards, there's an action window. 
I would like to, I'm searching for Gandalf here. So I can. Get another. All right, guys. <laughs> You need to stop interrupting. We're going to be here all day. No, I'm just joking. Adam, Adam, thank you for the super chat. $5. Appreciate it for the fellowship of the gaming table. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Thank you, Adam. Which includes everyone in the chat, too, by the way. <laughs> Quite the big thank fellowship. You, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone new here, by the way. Uh, I'm a sarcastic bastard making <laughs> lame jokes all day. So please, if you're getting offended, tell me. I'm so sorry. But uh, yeah, yeah. I know it doesn't rub everyone the right way. <laughs> uh, I am a smart ass. Uh, so please don't take me too serious. No. Uh, He's 99% so you know, joking. I do usually. see there's a bunch, yeah. Because I, <laughs> I see Sean saying, Robin Mel, I'm being a snitch or a rat. 73 watchers and only 11 likes. That's, that's, that, I when, think there's more when than. When I read that, that's how I know lots of new people are here right now. Oh. So, because you're not hitting the like button. <laughs> no, there's more than that. But I think I think on yours is not refresh. Oh, on. refresh! Yeah, refresh but your yeah, page. It's still still nice to uh, remind people. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Right now we have over seventy viewers and forty two likes, so it's pretty good. But I think before the stream started, we had like probably ten likes, uh, or maybe maybe around there, because people are awesome and even like the stream like before we even do it. It's that good. Buddhist possum says he'll never change. Yes, just so you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> just so you know. That's okay. <laughs> But as long as you know that going in, right? <laughs> okay, I think I would like to draw cards if you're fine with that and you don't need anything urgent because I'm looking for Gandalf. <laughs> you need Gandalf. I need Gandalf. Gandalf only to... shows up when he wants to show up. I know, He's but never look, late. I he, have he a rise. sneak attack and being able to use Gandalf twice yep. is like money. So yep, you're yep, cool. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah, draw you do two whatever. Cards. I don't care. I got another cancel a shadow card. All right. Yay. And I got, this is the card I wanted, return, return a card, a spirit. a spirit card from my discard pile to my hand so I can then recycle some of these. Beautiful. Things. Okay. No Gandalf, but. Okay. So this Dolgoldr Beastmaster, uh, I mean, I could, we get knew, I have a way. If I want, just I could spend money to get rid of them or. I can cancel the shadow. Hold on. So if it's just something see. bad. If I defend, he only has for three. So I could add another to Gimli, but that's a little scary. But then I can move one back off of him, mm -hmm. and that's the one I need. So I'm going to defend with Gimli. This is scary, but again, I could pitch a card to raise his defense. And I can cancel a shadow card if it's something shadow. completely terrible. Okay, here we go. It is nothing. It okay. is the brown lands, which does not have a shadow effect on it. Okay. Oh, well, this is a five, five threat, threat one. Get the hell out of here. That's not bad to have as, an, as a shadow yeah. card. Okay. Uh, so he's attacking for three. Gimli blocks two. One gets through. He's not four. Oh yeah, I, I already used him in the quest, so now I can't. Do you want to pitch a card so you don't have to take that one? So he's not one away. Uh yeah, shoot. I totally forgot. I, I I used unexpected courage, so I can't ready him back up. So yeah, let me just pitch a card. Um, I'll just pitch a uh, Bjorn, and uh, yeah, I'll just give him the extra defense, so he just blocks that. I don't want to be that close. Okay, so now fighting him back, uh, we just need six damage. He is Orc, so Leg Loss gets a bonus, so he's attacking for four. Uh, I don't know, five, six, boom. This guy's dead. He goes in the discard, not a victory point guy. Uh, leg Loss will put uh, all three on this one. Yay! Boom, goes, goes to the, back top, on of the deck. top of the deck. Okay, that's one of the three cards that we're going to draw that we know. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, ready. Ready. Ready, ready, ready. Oh, actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. Because I didn't have to cancel that shadow, refresh begins. I'm just looking for the action window. So there is an action window that I can do it before. Raising my threat. Yeah, so we do Gaining all this. Money. Uh, ready all our allies. I just want to do it in the right order. Uh, raise threat by one. So I'm at 30. I'm at 35. Pass the first player token. And then I, can, I have an action window that I can play an event. Okay, so I'm going to spend three spirit resources. Oh, I can get this one back. Uh, reduce one player's threat by six, or each player's threat by two. I'm at 30. I'm You're at 35. 35, okay. So you can reduce your threat by six. That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> right answer. Thank you I so know, much I for know that. what I'm doing. And now I can even get that back. So now the, hill troll, like... now the hill troll won't engage me. Look, I'm below 30. Now However, we have a oh, wait, he's gone. We have a slight problem now, is that my threat is higher than yours. So, so... who cares? But who that's cares? okay for now. You're fine. <laughs> I'm still at only 30. Don't worry. So I'll raise okay. mine more. And all, you'll see. <laughs> okay. So now we're on to uh, So new turn. Resources. I collected okay. money. Sorry, I, I think I, did I draw a card. No, I didn't no. draw a card yet, I don't think. Nope. But you go ahead. You go first. Blade of Glondolin. Oh. 
Cards to throw away. I can return an attachment, but I don't think I have. Do you have an attachment? No. Not yet. No, I don't have an attachment. Where's my citadel plate? Okay. Okay, I'm first now. So, I think I maybe even could draw cards in this phase. Yeah. Oh, planning. There's no action window in planning. Okay. Remember, it's all about questing right I now. I know, I'm looking for so Gandalf. So only spend your money on things that quest, 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 but we need to prepare for when the raft hits the banks and the enemies are all built up, which there's none right now, but yeah. I'm sure they will. Oh, I don't have enough money for Unexpected Courage. Okay, that's fine. Next turn for that. Uh, yeah, does anyone need a... Do you need a heal for Gimli? Would no, you feel more comfortable? No, no? Okay. So I think then in this case, we're going to put out these... This guy... We're going to spend two because he can draw cards. We can exhaust him to choose a player. That player draws one card. I think I have... That is all I'm going to do. I'm not playing anything. Okay. All right. Questing. Questing. Aragorn. Going to spend the money to ready him back up. Oh, sorry. I'm first. Sorry. Yeah, whatever. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just, yeah. Uh, I think I'm going all in questing here. Yep. Uh, I'll do the same for Gimli. Quest. Unexpected Courage is going to ready up. Quest. And... Quest. Should I put Legolas in? Quest. No, I might engage somebody, right? Well, no. we know that Who cares? two cards... Oh, yeah. But we can optionally take them. I'm putting them in. Leg loss going in. He's putting his big oh, one geez. willpower into the quest. Okay, and then so money. I'm putting five. I need to put money here for his ability. So you're putting five. Mm -hmm. Five, six, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So fourteen. Fourteen, and we can discard cards. Uh, well, one more. Oh, no. This card again. <laughs> no! Where do you keep coming from? So that's one. Two is a filthy wargs. Okay. Two threat. Twenty, they're definitely going to engage us. Three attack, one defense, three health. Uh, creature, not orc. Forced, if wargs is dealt a shadow card with no effect, return wargs to the staging area after it attacks. We, they're oh, not going to optionally come to us, only if we pick them. Yeah, up. we'll pull them. Yeah. If we can. Right. Uh, so that's two cards. We one need a more. third one. A third one, thanks to our uh, current quest rules. Please don't have search. <sighs> it's the brown land. So this one is forced. After we travel to it, you place a progress on it. So it's going to screw us in the staging because it's got five threat, but then it just oh, goes away and travel if we don't have an active location. Which we don't, so that's not bad. So we have here five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I think we... I think you said 14. I think we quest with 14. Nope, it's not going to be a one turn this one. Okay. So we so can put three, but like I can pitch. Uh, let me pitch... I can, I can raise uh, Gimli's by up to three. I can I can pitch one for uh, Aowen's ability, so now we're at four. Hmm. Just trying to think, like... I, I, I think we can manage one more. Like, Swift Strike... I threw one away, and I just realized Swift Strike would be great on this guy for, like, defending against him, and then you put damage on him before he runs away. Yeah. But I think we can manage one more if we... Like, right now we're putting four progress on it. These two will be gone. So I think... It's not terrible. Yeah, I'll put one more in. Okay, so we're up five. So that was using her ability that we can each put in. Or discard one card to make sure. a plus one. But I can do it. I do it for Gimli too. If, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then travel. So, so we this travel. one. And then it automatically is done. Yep. Okay, engagements. Mm -hmm. Pull this guy over. Slap this on. Uh, he attacks for three. Oh yeah, because if we don't get, if he doesn't get a shadow card. Hmm. I'm going to defend with this guy. Oh, he's got, oh, a, he's shadow got a shadow card, card, which is good. Uh, remove one progress token from the current quest. Three instead if this attack is undefended. Well, it was defended again. Okay, I don't want to cancel that because I feel like that's not the worst. Okay, so this guy oh, dies because he only blocks one, takes two. So three attack coming in. He is gone. Uh, then... I finally can play a Valiant Sacrifice after an ally card leaves play that player's con card blah, 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 draws two cards, whatever. 
I'm stumbling here. All right, so I'm going to draw two. One, Dwarven Axe. And, so, oh, this is good. Uh, if I can get two more money somehow for Aragorn, which I keep spending it all, uh, I can attach this to somebody to get two extra willpower, which could help us in this phase, or in this quest. Uh, okay. Then, uh, he didn't leave because he got a shadow effect. So then I can attack for... Uh, this is five. So boom, I squish him. And he is dead. I guess I could have moved a damage to him off Gimli. Yeah, let's say we did the Valor thing to do the heal. So I'll exhaust this. Yeah, we'll just do a little heal on Gimli. I don't have a Citadel plate yet, so I'm... Yeah, you don't want to yeah. get too close to death. Yeah, I have tons of cards to discard to help him get stuff, but uh, it's fine. Okay, done. Ready done. back up. Raise our threats. Going to 30. 31. First player is you. All right. Money, money, and draw a card. One, two, three. Steward of Gondor. Right. Oh, that's a oh late. this is good, but, but still late. Might be good. Okay, quick strike. What do you have looking for cards in your hand here? Uh, I'm still looking for Gan Gandalf, but. No, no, I'm just thinking for who that goes on to give resources out. Oh, I think it'll just go to her because half my resources, or like half of my cards okay. here are blue. Sure. Like all of these. If you even play it. Okay. Um, so me, planning. Uh, hmm. I could just slap a Bjorn in. Oh, unless you said you need money, right? Your character needs money? If, I, if we attached it to uh, Aragorn? Well... Because all, I'm, all, I'm, I don't have, I only have one purple card, oh, but okay. it does allow him to ready up and all that stuff all the time. But it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm about to spend all my red money though and put Bjorn into play. I think. Okay, I can give, I can give it to a, a red character. Yeah, I'll just play a big, big bad, big bad Bjorn. So he's got, I got willpower that can help us for questing. But his fight and defense is awesome. Three and three, six health. And you have an action. You can gain plus five to his attack. He can get super crazy with eight attack until the end of the phase uh, when you trigger the effect, but you shuffle him back into your deck at the end of that phase. Crazy. Okay. Uh, done. Done? Okay, so I am going to play Steward of Gondor for two. I don't know who the best character to put it on, to well, be honest. Well, I'm holding You're a holding hand of red. of red. Yeah, you, you take it for one of your red characters. So I could just get the red spend going yeah, faster. Because for my blue cards, I keep giving with uh, Theodred, I keep giving the resource to a uh, Eowyn, okay. so I think I'm fine. I'm just going to use it spend... action to put two resources on. I'm going to spend two spirit resources for an unexpected courage and we're going to put that here on Theodred so he can quest, give money, and then stand up and attack or something. I still have maybe, one. Maybe, maybe on her for her to defend then attack or quest then stand up and draw cards. Like yeah, because of her card can, draw yeah, ability? Yeah, I guess because of the quest. Yeah, you're right. But do we need card draw? Maybe you don't need it anymore. I don't know. <sighs> I don't but know. But she does have the nicer stat line that you might want to use for like Questing and attacking, questing, defending. And drawing, yeah. Okay, and then... Theodra is just a two attack and a one defense. Yeah. Eh. Okay. Eh. And then does someone need a heal? I'm tempted. Just, I, it's only tempted just to heal her. Yeah, because remember, because uh, if, oh no, that card's gone. Yeah, but maybe I wait one more turn and see what happens. I mean, we don't want to lose a hero. I don't have any other green things to do, so yeah, I'm just going to spend two and choose a character, heal all damage from that character. And two, and I'll just heal her one. I don't like her having... multiple characters? Huh? No, I just had to spend the resources for oh, her. Oh, I see. I thought you took Sorry, no. And then... All right. Uh, I still have one to cancel, and... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Try to keep it separate. Uh-oh. Like, we have another uh, patron. Steven, thank you for becoming a patron. Steven, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Anyone, anyone interested in supporting the channel, links are down in the description. That's where these guys are finding this stuff. I appreciate it. Oh, two restricted cards per character. Do we have Who that? Who has more than two? I, I mentioned it earlier, but I, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, I literally only see one restricted in play. Do you have a restricted? No. No. Yeah, I only have one restricted in play, so I don't know. Unless our cards have typos on them. 
Yeah, this is the the boon card. Yep. No. It's just that I, one. I've been checking and like, yeah, yeah. No, it's not restricted. It's just uh, unique. Yeah. Only thing I have is Blade of Gondolin that's restricted so far. But, but, uh, I do have a Dwarven Axe in hand that's restricted. And if I get Citadel Plate ever, but again, I only have one restricted in place, so we're still good. You can have two restricteds per hero. Just a reminder before you attach the steward. What? Sorry, Christopher, is that better? Why does it matter? Uh, unique cards, I think, Edward, don't interact with the restricted trait. It doesn't matter, right? You can have as many uniques. You just can't put... Yeah. You just can't put more... Like, you can't put another by the same title. Yeah, unique stops you from playing any more and play at the table, but, like, I think your restricted is too restricted. It doesn't add with uh, uniques, I think. I, I'm, yeah. Unless that, we learned this game wrong a long time ago, I think, but I don't think so. Yeah. Unless there's like a attachment limit. Oh, he thought it was restricted too. No worries, oh, no, no problem. No. Yeah, no the problem. unique the unique is locks that card down from being broken. Yeah, so it doesn't need the restricted trait. Or at least I guess it could if you really want to get crazy, but yeah, no, no, no. All right. So, uh, are we good to quest? I think so. All right, uh, you're first. Mm. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna. No, I want to get this out. <laughs> uh, five, six, but then I'll ready up with uh, unexpected courage. I'll ready up Gimli, and then. I don't know, there will be enemies, like I need someone to attack back, Legolas is just one. Yeah, because... Yeah, I'll, I'll keep Legolas up. Because the only problem is if we do complete this, it then fills up the staging area. And we could be in trouble. And then we have nobody ready. <laughs> so then it's like, uh-oh. Yeah, keep, keep some ready, because, yeah. Alright, because I can quest as well I only still. just did, I could have put one oh, more. Oh, you need, you need a mo I can give uh, Aragorn a money, so then if that matters... Uh, if you, yeah, if yeah, you sure. wanted to stand yep. him, and yep, then yep. I'll give him absolutely, money. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm putting in... Yeah, because I still can play the ce Celebrian Stone next turn if we still haven't completed this. But if we're on the next one, I don't care about that. All right, so I'm going to put in two. I'm going to need Unexpected Courage to stand her. Two, three, seven, eight. I'm putting in eight. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Plus a possible three more, plus a possible two more. Yep. So, so 14. So it is 14. Yep, 14. But could go as high as 19. 19, 19. with card discard. Yeah. Okay, so 14. We have three here, or four here. Okay, we're oh, surging surge. from the crows. Force after the crows are defeated, shuffle it back into the encounter deck. So they're going to surge. So that's one card. We still need at least three more to draw. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep them like this. Uh, another Dole Goldur Beastmaster. He's on two threat when he attacks. Oh! Did I deal him two shadow cards? I think so. No, I don't think I did. You didn't? Nope. Shoot. Uh, I'll just keep going forward because I don't know which card that would have been. Yeah, I forgot about his ability. I think I have fought one of these guys, right? And I probably forgot to give him an additional shadow card. Uh, didn't you some... like, I don't remember. No, I think I defended against him and then we I killed him. But I should have dealt another card. Somebody would, oh, it would have been the Banks of Anduin or something probably, right? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know what it would have been. Okay, that's fine. So I'm not going to roll that back, but I would have liked to, but it's okay. So that was the Surge. Misty Mountain Goblins. Force after they attack, remove one progress token from the current quest. Okay. okay. So we've... Uh, that's two, we got one more. One more, unless it's Surging. Necromancer's pass. Three more threat. Travel. The first player must discard two cards from their hand to travel there. So this is the second one we've seen. Okay, let's just throw these here. Throw these here. So now in the staging area, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're up two. We're only up two? Man, this is insane. Yeah, that surge did not help. Okay, so we're up two. I just want to use this so I don't, I'm not going to forget. So right now we're putting two on. I think for... Oh, I don't necessarily want to get rid of any of these cards for Eowyn. One second. I think Dan, I wanted to defeat him with events, 
But then I don't. I thought he did too. Didn't you do? No, but then I decided like not to do that because I just decided to kill that character and then draw two cards off the event. But originally I was thinking of doing that, uh, killing him before he went by doing some damage effects on defense and quick striking. But then I felt it wasn't worth it. But I was do I wanted to do it because of the shadow effect, but then I forgot about that ability. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. No big deal. Well. So right now we're putting into, I don't think I'm going to do anything for her ability because all my cards are like cancels and I want to keep them. And then the sneak attack, once I do discard this, I know Gandalf's coming off the so top. So we're only of making deck. two progress right now? Yeah, unless you want to discard this any cards. Only, it's worse. I know. So like, I, 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 yeah, I'm going to... Uh, like, unless you want me to put in a... I mean, we can take two a, of these guys out of the thing. Yeah, I can take one. But that's only for moving four. And we can travel. Oh, yeah. We can travel to one of the higher ones. Which is pitching cards. Oh, the first player discard cards. Oh, we could do this one. This is the one that puts it back on the top of the deck. I know, but we never get anywhere because it's, we keep just doing that over and over again. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Three, four, five, six. So we still need ten more progress. I can technically get rid of one of these cancel shadows and then just pull it back. I have two of them in my hand. The other thing is Legolas, remember you can add three on there. So is there some way we can get this to 13? We need to do, it's at 14, we do nine more. We can't, right? We can only up it by five more, which is seven. Because then we could complete it in the in the yeah, uh, combat phase and I don't know. Yeah, I think we're getting stuck here. All right, I'll, I will throw away one cancel a shadow effect card because I can pull it back. I can pull it back and I still have one. Okay. I don't want to do that, but I it can. Because the faster uh, we can get through this, the better. Okay, I'll throw a blade mastery away. I will throw um Yeah. Man, all this stuff can help us with fighting enemies. It's like, I, I can use a lot of these cards like really quickly once the money gets flowing. We can wait one more. I know. I okay, think... sure. Okay, so we're just putting... Man. We're putting four in. I was hoping two turns max we'd blow through this one, but... Yeah. Obviously, okay. don't have enough questing stuff. I thought we had more. Do we want to travel? I think the Surge really killed it. Yeah, yeah. Surge screwed us. Do we want to travel? Yeah. Uh, so we want to travel to this one, right? Unfortunately. You don't have cards you can I'm just lose first, to get three. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only problem is I get rid of this, which sucks. And some of these cards. But at this point, like, it gets rid of three out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. You want to do the one with no? Sure. Yep. In case I do get that Northern Tracker guy. Unless... No. I don't know. Want to do the other one? Because then, like, his ability could just... Oh, could ping knock. one and yeah, then two? And okay, then... yeah, let's do the other one. Yeah. All right. Two? Yep. Kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. Sorry. <laughs> I think they all would have, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this one I didn't want, but that's fine. Okay. Um... All right, we can optionally engage your first player. Mm. Two and three and one. Won't be able to kill this guy, but that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh no, I can't bring it back right now. Okay. Okay. Um. You know what? I think I'm going to faint this guy. Uh, I do have enough attack from two others. I could just defend with Gimli. If you have enough, like I can't, yeah, yeah. Let I me can't just defend. kill this guy. If that matters. Three? Oh. Because I only will, I'll defend with. Is he an orc? Yeah. Yeah, so this guy can one shot him. If that matters. Okay. And then I'll let you draw two cards so, if you want. So, hold on. Let me just continue here. Yeah, sorry. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, is more than enough. Okay, so I'm going to faint. Uh, this guy. So I don't have to worry about those two crappy shadow cards in his three attack. Uh, this one, you deal with your attack. Uh, he'll defend. Oh. Okay, that's nice. That's good. So he hits for two, he defends for one, has one health, he's dead. Okay. 
Okay, now I deal with this guy attacking back. Uh, I'm going to attack with these two. Now that's a total of seven. Uh, he blocks one, and six gets three. He only has five health. Oh, enemies, oh, okay. that's good, that's actually. Good. That's good. Still not the other hill troll. We have not seen him yet. <laughs> I know. I know. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. Okay, then Legolas. I'm going to attack that guy with Legolas. He gets plus one from Blade of Gondolin, so he's attacking for oh, four. Oh, I had to remove one progress token when he attacked. Okay, perfect. So that's gone. Uh, so this guy's dead. Yep. And, yeah. No uh -huh. victory points on any of those guys. Okay. Keep an eye on the victory point keyword there. Okay. And, oh, now uh, one progress on this one. From Legolas's Blade of Gondolin. See ya. And then two progress from Legolas's ability on this one. I got one. I was just going to change just, three Yeah, to three five. to five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I will exhaust Bear Vort. You can draw two cards to replace the two that you just lost. Oh, okay. Uh, horseback Archer, which has range, two attack, one defense, two health. Horn of Gondor, where were you? <sighs> After a character is destroyed, add one resource to attach hero's pool. There's a restricted attachment. Love slapping that down on like Legolas or something, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, refresh. Yep. Okay. Red up by one. I'm going to 32. I'll take Mendor and First Flare. One, two, three. 31. Draw on a card. After he comes to play, he can discard a condition attachment, but there's no bad attachment. Right, guard of the Citadel, which is two health. A little chumpy, but he can quest. He's got willpower. Interesting. Okay. okay. Planning. Go planning, ahead. Planning, planning, planning. He doesn't help me in questing. I don't have enough anyway, so I'm done. All right. I'll spend two off Aragorn to slap that on oh, Eowyn, so she gets plus two willpower. Okay. And then I'm going to spend one on a restricted, second restricted attachment. Oh yeah, I got to exhaust this. Let me get two money. And then I'll spend one money. I don't know if I did already, but whatever. Who cares? Uh, one money off of... Did I do that right? He had two. I just gained two. Maybe four. I spent one on uh, Horn of Gondor. I think that's right. So he's at three. Okay. Oh, no, we have threes. So Legolas is going to get rich. Uh, then I'm going to let's play one of these little guys for that three. So I have a little horseback archer. And that is all. Okay. Uh, quest phase begins, so I'm just going to do an action here. There's an action window, so I'm going to spend one. To return a spirit card from my discard pile to my hand, I can either bring back the shadow cancel or I can bring back the reduce our threat. I'm at 32. Your call. I'm at 31. But I. Hmm. It's your call. Could reduce our threat again by Do two each. Want. Maybe I just bring. No, I think I'll just play safe and I'll take back the shadow cancel. The cool part is at being below, like when they do start to engage us, like some of them will be at a higher threat that won't engage us if we're under like 30 or 35 or something. But at that point. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's not that many and we won't be questing really yep. well a little bit, but okay. Let's see. So I brought back another shadow cancel. Okay. All so right. Questing. questing. Um, I'll throw Gimli in. Ready him back up. So that's two. Aragorn. I'll throw him in for two. Um, oh, we want to over. And then right? I'll throw Bjorn in for one. Okay. He's going to give the money here, so I have cancel effect, so I can pay for it. She's going to ready. So sorry, you put in how much? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five. Six. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen. Six and twelve? She's done six? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. So at 13? Uh, Not even as good as before? How is that possible? 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, 15. So three cards at least. First one, deal one damage to each player, control, blah, 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 35 or higher. That's We're the not. Third, third one. So, so uh, maybe they're all done okay. and we stay below 35, which is great. Wow. Card number two, Banks the Anduin. This is the one that bounces back on the top. So this is the second, second one. one. Okay. Oh, Only so one we can... threat. Not bad. Third card. 
Not a surge. Thank you. Okay. Two threat enchanted stream while it's the active location. Players cannot draw cards. Only two to get rid of it, but though. But we can travel there, and then yep. he can kill. Okay. All right, so anyways, let's math two, it out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And we're at 15, so, so we're seven. seven. Is that enough? Seven, ten. Yeah, exactly enough. Seven, so we need another Well, seven nine. plus three. Is there nine there? Yep. yep. Okay, we're good. Okay. So, uh-oh. Uh-oh. So we've now done 16, so we're completed that one. What? I was just gonna say we can draw a card now. I think we do this. I, I don't know oh, when I don't know what it exactly order happens, is, but, but let's sure. Not, we'll, let's do it. Who cares? Whatever. Which Ready him. Okay. I draw a horseback archer. Uh, oh, I draw Gan Gandalf. Can't see. Sorry. Gandalf. Gandalf. I got a horseback and I have sneak archer. Attack. This is not bad. All right. Let's continue. The ongoing harassment from your enemies has forced your raft to the shore, and you must now confront their ambush head on. If you survive this attack, the path to the Golden Wood should be open before you. So these are all the enemies that are piling up on the shore. Now we're on the shore, let's fight. So you don't even need progress for this one, so who cares about questing other than to stop your threat from going up if we don't quest enough. When revealed, reveal two encounter cards per player and add them to the staging area. Then check this out. Skip the staging step of the quest phase for the remainder of the game, which means we draw no cards off the top of the deck for the rest of the game unless some kind of effect does it, or for shadow cards, I guess. Um, once there are no enemies in play, the players have won the game. So it's just fight time. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna add four cards, and I hope no surges. But uh, oh, sorry. Oh, what that's from? Yeah, that light there. Whoops. It's all good. It's been doing it the whole time. I forgot. All right, Galadin Fields uh, is a victory point one three threat, but we don't count score here. We don't care. But it nope. gets it gets out of the discard pile. Uh, While well, it's the active location, each player must raise their threat by an additional point during the refresh phase. Well, that's sucky. Okay. It's not an enemy though. Not an enemy. Right now, we only have one enemy. So I've only done one, right? One, yep. Okay. Oh, Dol Guldur Orcs. Two threats. When revealed, the first player chooses one character currently committed to a quest. Deal two damage to that character. Okay, so that's me. What? The first player chooses. Now, oh yeah, I have a question. Does anyone know in the chat? The first player chooses one character currently committed to the quest. Does it have to be a character they control? Or can it be any character at the table? To deal two damage to that. Are you allowed to deal damage to other people's characters? Because maybe Gimli wants to take some damage. I don't know. But Gimli was in the quest, right? Yeah. So I don't know. Anyone in the chat know? Off the top of their head? Nobody is currently questing right now. I call BS to that. Did we... Aren't we still not in the questing phase? Technically, Yeah, we're, yes. we're still in the questing phase. Because we just applied progress and we advanced the quest, but I don't think we moved on from questing yet. So technically there is still a current quest, or no? Did that close up? Hmm. Well, let me look here. Oh, Nick says you've already resolved quest resolution, so you've done questing. Oh, okay. Okay. Staging quest revolution. I just thought if we're still in the phase, we're still like people are still engaged to a quest, right? Like, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it just says quest resolution is all the stuff we just did. If it's higher, unsuccessful, if if we su succeed, characters committed to the quest are considered committed to the quest through the end of the quest phase, unless a oh. card ability removes them from the quest. Those characters right here. do not ready. So yeah, here, this is the revised rules, which I think are just the same, but maybe clarified, I don't know. Characters committed to a quest are considered committed to that quest through the end of the quest phase. Unless a card ability removes them from the quest, those characters do not ready at the end of this step. Then right. quest phase ends. So I feel like we're technically we're still, still in, in here. quest phase. Yeah. Well, when does the re resolution? Well, resolution uh... was... Oh yeah, because above that is when you're dealing with the uh, when you're dealing with the progress on the quest. Yeah, because we're not in travel phase yet for sure. We haven't moved on from finish resolving the willpower, the progress, all that stuff, right? You just draw reinforcement cards. I don't know what reinforcement cards are. Quest is resolved after. This, we resolve the quest, we were uh, so we've, above. So we've interrupted, we... we've interrupted, we're resolving the quest, you put progress on your active location and quest card, that triggered advancement of the quest, but it didn't end the quest phase, is my understanding. 
So we didn't move on to travel phase yet. We're not in the travel phase. I would not say we are. Yeah, because we're still resolving. Yeah. <laughs> Yogi says, I have no idea, but at 3.5, quest phase ends. <laughs> I still... <laughs> <laughs> Step one. Thanks, Yogi. <laughs> step one, complete quest. Step two, step three, profit. Step four, or step three point five, quest phase ends. Yeah, I think we're still in quest phase because technically we're still resolving a quest card. Yeah, we're still questing. Okay. So, okay. And then the rest of the ch the rest of the chat is answering so, yeah. the question of I so they think it's put, any card or any character. I can put it on Aragorn says, if you don't want to put it on on one of your characters. Yeah, I would only put it on here. But if you if well, you, don't put him close to death like that. Yeah, then that's fine. Then you can take it. I can put it on Gimli if I know I'm going to be attacking. But we still haven't revealed the final card. Two cards. Two cards. So something could come out and I add can take, one. I can take something on my side because I still have things standing. Oh, you know what? Like she can Bjorn. defend. Bjorn, Bjorn, Bjorn. Bjorn. He has, oh, he has yeah, six health. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't say hero, right? No, it's just character. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I could have put it on him, too, and he died. No, no, we don't that want him to die. That would give you money, right? No, it's fine. Okay. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. We don't need more money right now, I don't think. Oh, what's this one? Massing at night. Oh, this is the one. Okay, our first time playing this encounter uh, this year. <laughs> <laughs> our first time playing this encounter this year. This card came up on setup. Oh, yeah, it was... On setup. It was terrible. I don't know why we didn't scoop and just end it there, but we were dumb and kept playing, and it got way out of control. It and was then insane. And surges happened as well. Oh, yeah. We had, like, all Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. This card came and drew us into a surging card. And none of those were hill troll. And then we set up a hill troll. Yeah. We had like five cards in the staging area on like finishing setup. Yeah. It, it was... looked like what it does now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why. One. I don't know why we continued, but we had no idea. We were just like, let's just play. We're fine. And yeah, this, this screwed us. So when this reveals. But I can cancel this. So I would actually. I'll cancel it. Okay. So if something worse comes up, I can't cancel and it. And then one more card. Surge all day, every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh no, surge. you jinxed it. Stupid cr Yeah, who said the surge? <laughs> Lucaris. You jinxed it. Uh, oops. And then... One more. One more. Oh, well, possibly okay. one more. Uh, after the attack, remove in progress. So doesn't That doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So we got lots so, of enemies. Okay. So remember... Do you want to put the enemies together in locations yeah, together? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just yeah, so yeah. that we can see yeah. what we have to do. You can fight. put similar locations beside each other to keep well, it clear. We can travel to one if you want, because it doesn't. it'll just remove... Okay, so uh, there we go. So remember, we can't win. We draw no more cards for staging, but this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 in the staging area for future questing, assuming we don't pull some out. But we know these guys are going to engage us because they're all 30. I'm at 31, you're at 32. 32. So these enemies are for sure leaving the staging area, whether we pull them or they don't. And we win once these enemies are all defeated. Okay, not bad. I don't see the other hill troll. Uh, we know the snake guy left. We got rid of the two beastmasters. There's like, uh, who'd we saw? That, that guy from the first one or whatever, the Uth talk guy that adds a, a resource and then increases the attack. He's not here. Yeah, he's not here. So this is actually pretty good. And... I noticed our favorite friend that we see every time we play this game, even back in 2011, 2012, whenever we started. Uh, I remember oh, when we used to see that goblin the sniper. The goblin sniper never showed up. Yeah. Which is crazy. Which is and there's a couple of them in there, I believe. And they like stay in the staging area, sniping you every, uh, every turn, and you can't pull them out unless they're the last enemy in the staging area. So. Okay. Uh, so right. I think we so let's, let's travel. travel. We have yeah. to travel to a three, right? Uh, to get. This is because you can. That one stops the drawing cards. If I kill an enemy, I can get rid of that. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, so I think we travel here right. just to get rid of three. So we're going to travel to this one and forced. While it's the active location, each player must raise their threat by an additional point during the refresh phase. Hopefully, it's gone before we get to the refresh phase at the end of the, the round. Okay. That's the plan from like uh, Legolas doing his little ability. Okay. Okay. Engagement. Uh, so you're first. Do you want to option engage somebody there? Engagement. So here's a. What? Just say it. I have. I know. I'm. I'm just thinking. I have Gandalf. I can sneak attack him in, and kill somebody in the staging area. You do whatever you want. But the only problem is, you're. Are we in combat now? Yeah. So we stay. So oh, we're in encounter phase. So encounter is a separate phase, right? Yeah. So remember, Gandalf's going to return at the end of that phase. 
Yeah, but so if you I... want to wait till combat, so he can come into play, destroy one, and then defend and then or attack against another. Someone else. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then... Otherwise, he, he comes in an encounter, destroys one, you get the enemies, where he got all our enemies, and then he goes back. Yeah. That sucks, But right? he just would have killed somebody, yeah, before. But he can still but kill can them still in the defend. combat yeah, phase, yeah. Okay. so... Come on, man. So I'm first... I think we saw one Goblin Sniper, Ultra Violetta, as a shadow card, I think. Yeah, we saw one as like a shadow card, I'm pretty sure, which was oh, nice. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah. Okay. Is there one that you want or one that you don't want? I can take. Don't care. I can take this Remember, one. Remember, uh, I can one shot one of these with leg loss because they're orcs and he attacks for four. No problem. Okay, you take these guys. Guy. Literally need one damage and they're dead. I'm gonna take this guy. Because and you can Gandalf, Gandalf one of these Gandalf guys. Is, he's gonna he's gonna Gandalf this one. Sure. Okay, so I'll optionally take this one. Okay, and then these are both the same. So one comes to me, one comes to you. Sure. Okay. Okay, so your first player. Uh, we are dealing shadow cards. Here first. Highest threat first. Okay. And on my side, this one, oops, this one and this one, like that. Okay, so after Shadow Cards are dealt, there's an action window where sure. I am going to pay, play Sneak Attack. For Wizard one. is never late. He arrives exactly when he wants to, or however that quote goes. Here's play Gandalf. Gandalf. And for anyone new to the game, he's awesome sauce. He's the reason I bought 67 core <laughs> sets to build card decks for four players back in the day. Uh... And anyone who plays Marvel Champions, well, this is this is Nick Fury's grandfather here for that card. Mm -hmm. So five cost, four of everything, four health. At the end of the round, though, you must discard him from play. But and it's at, at the end of this phase because I sneak sneak attack. Oh, him sorry, in. end of the yeah, but you're sneak attacking him in, which oh, that's that over. So this is the one we had comments on the last video, like it, this combo is so broken, but it's part of the fun of the game. It's awesome. Uh, so sneak attack, action. Put one ally card into play from your hand at the end of the phase. If that ally is in play, return it to your hand. So the cool part is you drop Gandalf in play. He's normally five. And when he comes in, he has after he enters play, choose one. You can draw three cards if you need, deal four damage to an enemy, or reduce your threat by five. And then at the end of the phase, so if you do it in combat, you can use him in attack or defense. Then he comes back to hand. So if he has damage on him, he loses it. And then in the next uh, planning phase for the next round, you can then pay for him if you have the five resources. Or sneak attack him again if you have another seek attack. Do it all over again. But then he comes out again and does the same ability. And then you have him for the full round the next time. And only one player can have him in play at a time, though. Because he uh, is unique. Uh, but that's, that's Gandalf. It's one of the most fun little interactions. I love that they put that in the core set, like, right at the beginning of the game. Because, like, it, it hooks people, right? Once you get to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Little, little combos. I have been holding Sneak Attack since Mulligan. <laughs> yes. Just for this moment. From the animated 70s uh, Lord of the Rings movie. Stop. I am Gandalf. And Gandalf is me. <laughs> However so you say that. But the, I remember that. The ability that I'm going to do is I'm going to deal four damage to an enemy. And I'm going to do it to this guy here. So he doesn't attack. Okay. And then as first player, I will use Gandalf to defend this attack of one. Uh, defending character does not count its defense. No problem there. Gandalf will take one damage. Oh, no. All right. I will. Oh, did you remember to return or remove one? Uh, oh, no. Where's the crows? Did you shuffle them back in? Oh, you haven't attacked no, I haven't attacked yet. Where's this one? Oh, this guy. Uh, okay. So I'll deal with the attack from this guy. And he's attacking for two. Mm, doesn't matter. I'll defend with Gimli for two. Uh, okay. Shadow. Defending player chooses and returns one exhausted ally they control to its owner's hand. If <laughs> I can cancel it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? I think at this point it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think we killed them so all. So Bjorn, I paid six <laughs> full money for this guy, and he's just going to go back to hand because he's my only exhausted ally. It did clear some damage off him. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Uh, funny guy, funny guy. Okay, then I'll leg all... Oh, no, I gotta deal with this guy. Uh, so... This guy, I think... I'll just go undefended. He's only attacking for one. Yeah, I can cancel a shadow if it's bad. It's nothing. Oh, nothing. Okay. Uh, so I gotta put one full damage on... <laughs> Gimli, I don't know. Okay. Okay, so at the end of this... Uh, uh, well, now we gotta oh, fight. no, we gotta fight. Okay, so, so I'm first. you can kill with Mendor on your guy. Yep. So He's a, only a one. Boom. He has no defense. So he gets just shuffled, shuffled back yep, in. Shuffled back in the deck. Okay. Then I'm going to leg loss. Um, this guy. He's an orc. Uh, definitely kills him. 
Okay. Three progress. Three progress That's off of his uh, blade and his ability. Victory. This is a victory point, so it's in the victory display. Okay. All right. Uh, then the crows are going to get a horseback archer firing at them and killing them. They get shuffled back in the deck. And, and that's all the enemies. Oh, and then Gandalf gets returned. No, it doesn't even get that far. It doesn't even we get that literally, far. It, it literally, I believe, ends instantly. Once there are no enemies in play, the players have won the game. So it's just dead stop right there. Wow. We did we it. We did it. Not even close either. Like every time we play this, Gimli's like on his last, li last lifeline. Even if I have a Citadel plate on this guy, he is like uh, either has died in our playthroughs or like so close to death. But uh, we did it. Wow. And no other hill troll. Again, I just shuffled the crows in, so we don't know where the hill troll was at the time, but, you know, he was, yeah, Chieftain Uthdok, that's the guy. Oh, there's two of them probably, because there's an orange one here. Yeah, we saw lots oh, of enemies. Oh, there's three crows? Oh. What the heck? Three crows? We saw lots of enemies in there. Uh, what's this one? Oh, when revealed, each location in the staging oh. area is one threat until the end of the phase. Each player with a threat of 35 or higher chooses and discards one card from hand. Also, I ended at 32. What did you end at, threat-wise? 31. Okay, so that re reduction of six was yeah, it's key. clutch. And the fact we saw all of those ones that do the damage um, to the 35 or higher, we saw those all before 35 because you reduced. Yeah. Yeah, that was so huge. So that was a huge play to just reduce yours by six. Check out this guy. This guy's crazy. Uh, this guy, if he comes out as a shadow effect, he becomes a character that's like attacking you, and then he jumps back to the top of the encounter deck. Yeah, that's so annoying. So funny. So annoying. Yeah, the other hill troll was in there. And more Dol Guldur orcs. So yeah, lots of dirty things still in the deck. But we definitely saw all of those ones that, um... All the ones that did the, uh, where were those? 35 or higher business. Yeah, this one. This one, like, it was the one that caught us off guard, like, many times. Yep. Many times. I'm just not even paying attention. I'm at 35 or higher, and Gimli's down to one left, and I'm thinking, like, yeah, I'm fine. It's all good. And then, or, like, you know, we undefended, and I had to put damage on, like, Aragorn, so he's down to one left. This card just comes out of nowhere. You're 35 or higher just like rains damage down all over everybody and uh yeah you can see a lot of things die because it's all your allies too so any of the allies that have like one health left or only one health in general it kills all of them it's crazy like none of, nobody rain, brings a raincoats to the party like to no. handle the evil storm like what the hell is going on there anyways uh that was awesome i thought we'd be playing this two maybe three times today i know yogi's asking are we going to scenario three not today <laughs> not today uh, I am definitely, I want to just try Scenario 3 out off stream with these decks once, maybe twice, just to refresh myself on how the scenario works, uh, and see if we need to play it on easy right away, or we need to tweak our decks, and Orbit, I'm looking at you, if you play this with your son, with these decks in between now and when we schedule the episode, the episode we might not play till next weekend, maybe we'll play on a weeknight, depending on how we get time to play this game before the next stream, I'll schedule it soon. It'll pop up in the video description in the playlist uh, or just subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and you get notified when we go live, when I schedule it and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, and you'll see it in your subscription feed. But I just want to play the third scenario. I just don't want to be streaming that third scenario for like three episodes in a row because we keep trying it over and over again like you originally play that scenario with core set card pool. Um, but maybe we can tweak the decks a little bit, make it more ready for that scenario. Oh, we got to do our resolution still. Oh, yeah, we're still not done, I guess. Uh, yeah, we didn't flip this. So one sec, we'll do the resolution. Um, but I'm just letting everyone know if they want to run away, uh, catch you before you run, is that uh, we're not going to play the next scenario today, but I will schedule an episode. We'll play it. If we have to play it two, three times, whatever, that's fine. We might drop it down to easy on, like, the second attempt just to... I don't want to sit there and, and get stuck on it forever. I really want to see the new content from that new scenario pack uh the darkness of Merkwood or whatever i'm not playing this to play escape from dog gold or that one is recommended like new players don't even play that one skip that one buy an expansion pack play that go buy the black riders saga expansion go play that if you're a new player and you buy this core set you can try escape from gold order if you're okay of punishing yourself over and over again and play it and trying it that's fine but normally you'd skip it 
as a new player or a player with only the, uh, the course set card pool. But we'll try it. I might drop it down to easy. We'll see if we can beat it. We'll see if the campaign helps us. And let's see what happens here. Resolution. Add a copy. Each Add each copy of Valor and Scarred in play, which we never got a Scarred, which is nice. Which is great. I think it's our first time ever playing this scenario, not getting a Scarred. It is. I'll record everything after. Right uh, after so the Valors, uh, it says, record the names of heroes with Valor and or Scarred attached in the notes section of the campaign log and attach them to those heroes when setting up each subsequent scenario in the campaign. Cool. Cool. So, uh, okay, so... Gimli is got my valor permanently then. Oopsie. Okay, maybe I mean maybe that's fine. <laughs> maybe it's fine. Maybe that's fine. Uh the hero with the most damage will be taken prisoner. Oh yeah, we lose a character in that one, I remember. Oh. So man. now it says the hero with the most damage will be taken prisoner at the beginning of escape from Gold Dol 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 Dol. Uh in case of a tie, randomly select among the heroes with the most damage. Record the name of the prisoner in the notes section of the campaign log. And it says some flavor text on here. Our pursuers were too persistent. And they're ambushed too well planned to be mere coincidence, says Mendor, after finally reaching the shores of Lorien. I fear greater evil directs them from the shadows. So, Gimli's most damage? Yeah. So, Gimli's the prisoner? We were. <sighs> Who would we have chosen as the prisoner anyway? So, I remember from that scenario, again, it's, it's been like. <clears throat> 10 years, no, maybe like 9 years since I probably played Escape from Gold or Gold Do, bleh, Escape from Dol Golder. Uh, and I know you always like, you, at the start, you, I think in setup, you choose a character to be captured and you like flip them face down. I think, until you like rescue them or something. Oh, so we'll just do whatever we can as fast as we can to but, rescue him. But I think normally the players get to choose. I right, because you wouldn't have any damage. You'd be playing it as a standalone, right? Oh, man. Oh, and Orbit says Gimli was his prisoner as well. So Orbit did say as well, I stayed up until 1.30 a.m. and played twice by myself. And was one and one. Played easy this morning and aced it. Oh, I also okay. played with this resolution outcome. Okay, so it is oh, possible. Okay, okay. It's possible. Okay, we'll try it. I mean, we'll see. Okay, so that's the resolution. Uh, the other thing is, uh, what was I going to say? So that doesn't change any anything. Oh, but the next campaign, uh, the next episode. So I'm curious. Oh, okay. Uh, I've not looked at this yet. I just want to see how it starts it off. Just just for my, my own curiosity here. So this is the campaign card. Does it change the next scenario, making it easier for new players? That's what I want to know. Because right now what I saw is, yeah, we start with Valor, which is better than you would in normal play. But mm -hmm. then it screwed us by forcing, like, Gimli, for example, and not giving us a choice to purposely, like, make a prisoner we don't care about, right? Yeah. Or a hero we don't care as much about. Uh, so, set up, put Mendor into play, attach, appointed by fate to a, uh, to a hero of the first player's choice. And we'll show this all off in detail on the next episode for sure and go through it for setup, but I'm just curious. Because I was complaining about this being in the core box, but if they corrected it with campaign mode and made the scenario smooth out with the difficulty curve and bring it down a little bit so then it, it, it flows into the next two scenarios if you bought that pack. Attached hero collects one additional resource during each resource phase. Okay. Well, I mean, that could find you the answers and the things in the play and get stuff going faster for you. Yeah, especially right off the bat. This okay. Starting in play. Okay. okay. Uh, so I will keep that with that one. Okay. Uh, then, force. When a hero would randomly be selected as a prisoner, the prisoner from the campaign log is selected instead. Each card attached to that hero is turned face down until the hero is rescued. Mendor is captured as well. Oh no. Place Mendor face down next to the prisoner. This does not cause him to leave play. Flip this card over. <laughs> Response. After the first objective is claimed, flip Mendor face up and place one damage token on him. Oh no. Okay. Okay. I don't want to read the rest. I don't want to know the resolution. How did, uh, okay, maybe the other thing tells us how to get Gimli back. Well, no, it's part of the normal it's quest, so you don't need oh, it on okay. the... The campaign's like to a, a, oh, a, a, a men yeah, thing. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's just how to get Mendor back. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah. Wow. Let's throw these cards in there. But yeah, that's cool. That is cool. All right. Be honest. Did you think we were going to win that based on the initial opening hands? When I saw the faint draw on the first round when we I top decked that, I thought, all right, all right. We, we have a chance? Yeah, because every time we saw a faint early, like, we kind of did good. Uh, or passable. Um, also, the card you attached on Gimli, we would never did that before, Protector of Lorien. The fact I could pitch cards um, to add his, to his defense made me okay on defending against the Hill Troll. Because before we did defending against the Hill Troll, Gimli would either A, die from a shadow card being destructive and you not having cancel, yeah. or get him down to one health. And then something else would happen that my threat would get raised. I'd get to 35 and I couldn't get that last, I couldn't get the Citadel plate or I couldn't get a Gimli having a two buffer. And the one damage card would come out and just destroy him. Uh, all from the Hill Troll at the first round would screw me later when I'm over 35 threat. Uh, having the faint was huge. Yeah, that yeah. was faint, so huge. Faint's huge, or some way you get money to get Forest Snare going, but... I didn't even see that. Yeah, it's all good. I you never only have two it. in your deck, I think. Oh, one was the second last card in my deck. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and the other one was, like, halfway. So, Ultraviolette, it says all the cards you have attached to Gimli just go face down. So, the cards that you have right now? No, because I think we would clean up now. And what it's saying that for is because of the Valors and stuff like that that are in the campaign log that you're supposed to attach them to that hero. So we know Gimli's going to start with Valor. He might have started with a Scarred. So I think that campaign is, is uh, the campaign card has taken that into effect. Um, unless there's a planning phase before the capture, but I, I don't think so. I see. Yeah, Ezra says all cards he would have on setup. On basically. setup, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. You're, you're correct. I'm not. We're not. It didn't tell us to write in the campaign log anything currently attached to him from this scenario. We just clean this one up. Um. So yeah. Cool beans. And then Edward is saying, remember campaign rules. You can heal Gimli all the way and add plus one threat to your starting total. Right. We're not playing the advanced or hardcore mode of the campaign. Those campaign rules are a special campaign thing. Uh, I remember those in here. Yeah, it's called Expert Campaign Mode. Expert Campaign Mode, we are not playing. We are not experts. It's an alternate version of the campaign mode for players who are psychos. Uh, I'm just joking. Players, who, uh, players do not reset their hit points of their heroes between scenarios of an expert campaign. At the end of each scenario, record the number of damage tokens on each hero in the notes section of the campaign log. Then, when setting up the next scenario, place a number of damage tokens on the hero they control equal to the number listed in the notes section of the campaign log. Each player may choose instead to heal the starting damage from a hero they control at the cost of a permanent plus one penalty to their starting threat for each hero healed this way. Could you imagine? Yeah. That's expert That's mode. That's crazy. No, no. That is fine if you have an expanded card pool. Yeah. And you come rolling into the revised core set and you're like, ha, 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 let me play my deck that has the broken endless combos where I draw 67 cards on my first turn. <laughs> you know, and have 87 resources on one hero. Uh, you know, that's what that's for. That's true. <laughs> and you're like, all right, I need to beef this up because I'm just crushing it. It's good to have scalable difficulty in a game with so many options and moving pieces, right? Because, like, you, yeah, you, it's hard to control when an LCG gets to, like, thousands of cards. It's like, how do you play test and make sure all those things don't break and combo with this and that properly? Um, and, and, yeah, things will just happen. So they build those extra difficulty levels when there's a player who min-maxes and solves it and breaks a combo. Yeah, you can increase the difficulty and make it more challenging so the deck ha has a bit of a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's there for. Or players who are okay with losing a lot until they solve it. Yeah, some people want the challenge. So we know some people left, uh, but we now have more likes than viewers, so that's good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone, that thank clicked you. the like button. Much appreciated. And we have another super chat from Orbit. Orbit, you've already done enough, man. You, you build the decks for us. You don't, you don't need to keep... No, I'm just joking. Uh, for the cause, to free Gimli. Thank you, Orbit. Yeah, I'm excited to play that next one, because, again, I haven't played Dole, Escape from Gold, Dole, Dole Golder. I know we played it when we first were learning the game. I realized it was not a thing to play. It, I didn't want to turn off any of the other players that I'm showing the game to and make them hate it, that they, we just get crushed. 
So we skipped it, we moved on to expansions and stuff. I may have come back and played it for fun with decks later when we expanded our card pool a few years later, but I, I probably didn't. Maybe I just ignored it. Uh, so I'm excited to visit that one again for the first time in like nine years or something like that. Uh, so we'll see. And with the same card pool that we had at the first time, so but now we have campaign cards and uh, more, I guess more knowledge. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know where this is coming from, but apparently one more like and you're going to sing? <laughs> um, I didn't sign anything that has me agreeing know. to that. I Maybe need to that was something marketing uh, manager Dan said. Yeah, I need to speak with my lawyer or have a private <laughs> meeting with marketing manager Dan after the stream. Because these calls I get and the stuff I'm supposed to do for viewers, I don't. I never agree to any of this stuff. My manager, my PR guy, they're like I, I fire these people every week because they keep messing up. I don't know. I keep keep Dan around though for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because he supports the channel. Maybe that's it. Anyways, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, uh, Yogi is saying, speaking of difficulty adjustments, have you gotten your hands on the hood? For the standard two encounter set? I don't know what that means, Yogi. The hood. Is that like a Lord of the Rings expansion? Like late a later one or something? I stopped I stopped buying cards for this game for like the last few uh um camp uh cycles. Cycles is the word. I'm not sure the hood. Unless you mean like the Marvel Champion, like encounter that that hood enemy. Oh, oh from Marvel okay. Champions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Do we have I, that one? I, we might have that one. Might have that one. I've been collecting Marvel Champions, still buying stuff for it. We'll we'll still play it on the channel, you know, a couple times a year kind of thing. But that's a night like that game I always talk about is like a game I love dabbling in. But again, it's like I don't have the same attachment and love for it that I do with this game or even Arkham Horror. Like this game and Arkham Horror are like so unique, even though they're the same like you know, same DNA of the co cooperative living card game. Marvel Champions feels like it's just Lord of the Rings living card game, but made more casual for that audience, which is great. It, it feels like you just don't have to put as much into it. And it's more compact, even the campaigns, even the single scenarios, all that stuff. It's, just like a, it's definitely more fun, I'll say. I definitely have the most fun with Marvel Champions. It's just pure fun. I love it. Uh, this game is like more stress and strategy and gets more nerdy and I always compare this whenever I'm explaining these games to people and are asking like which cooperative LCG they are all targeted very heavily at their audience that uh, consume the original IPs media so for this Lord of Rings game they have the license for the books and they use this story in this one is based between when Gandalf's birthday was in like the 12 or whatever, 17 years or something before they travel off to go find the ring um, or go put the ring in the, you know what I mean, before the fellowship sets off. Um, but this is targeted at the book readers of Lord of the Lord of the Rings books, okay? So it's a little more like deeper, serious, I guess. I, I don't know, a little more mature, maybe is the word. I don't know if that's the right word, maybe not. Because nowadays, like, everyone's reading comics and everyone's reading or watching Lord of the Rings, that kind of stuff. But it's targeted more at that audience. So you picture the audience of someone who would read Lord of the Rings and get really into Lord of the Rings lore and story and stuff. They want a game that goes deep and rich and all that stuff, right? Arkham Horror is targeted at the horror audience. Punishment, hopelessness, uh, just like the Lovecraft stories are full of. Hits the theme out of the park and anyone who's into that kind of thing, they love punishment. They love weird stuff, and that's what that, that card game does. This one, or sorry, Marvel Champions, is targeted at the comic book audience, right? It's based on the comic book IP. Comic books, I know I still love comic books. I still watch the comic movies, but no offense, but they are targeted at like 15-year-old boys, and uh, that's who the card game is designed for, and the casual, lighter new to the hobby audience like they are, did a great job at making that way more new player friendly not as difficult most of the time but there is product there and difficulty levels to increase that but definitely marvel champions is a more casually designed lcg could be played at the lightest level and totally fine lord of the rings i can't say that lord of the rings you got to sit there deck building for three hours trying to solve a quest every single pack that's a hardcore game to me okay and then 
uh, Arkham Horror, same kind of idea, the whole idea of spending XP and upgrading and minimaxing to try to solve and, you know, it has the fail forward, so it's nicer, but uh, definitely Marvel Champions have playing all three hundreds of hours each. Uh, definitely Marvel Champions is the more relaxed one, but you can play scenarios and campaigns and crank the difficulties to make those super unforgiving and have to build and spend hours tweaking decks and all that kind of stuff. They all can be taken to that extreme level. But yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. So that's why I explain it to people. Is like They built the game for reading Lord of the Rings book fans, reading Lovecraft theme and loving that horror genre, and then comic book fans. Not so much the movie fans, but like comic book fans. Like, I don't know, it's like a little different. I don't know how to explain it as that good, but. <laughs> Locator, no singing, no singing. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see that in there. Uh, maybe I did, I can't remember. No, Locator said he reviewed the documents and you're actually forbidden from Oh, singing. I'm forbidden. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, you're good, 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 good. Locator's on our side. Yep. My, yeah. my official lawyer, my, my Rob's Gaming Table channel lawyer uh, <laughs> has, has definitely checked and we are good. I don't do anything without my lawyer present. Thank you, Locator, for being in the chat. <laughs> That's my standard answer to everything I think might get me in trouble. I'm surprised not advising me from talking about the different card games and comparing them. I love them all. So you could leave your comments hating on me and disagreeing with me, but I still love them all. So I'm just trying to give some extra information uh, to help people decide which one to jump into. There was a question on which one's your favorite. It depends on the day, honestly. <laughs> so I play Arkham Horror, right? We get into it. I get super serious. I get stressed. We're not winning all the time. We're failing forward. People are dying. It's getting crazy. I have no hope we're ever going to finish the campaign and win. Uh, but I'm having fun. Yeah, you have emotional roller coasters. Oh, while I get you play that. super defeated in the, yeah. the game. Uh, my sore loser side comes out. <laughs> uh, I get salty. It's so great, but it's it's designed to do that, and and it does such a good job. Uh, but then when I break away from uh, Arkham Horror and I jump to Marvel Champions, it's like such a refreshing palate cleanse. Fun. You're the superhero, smashing everybody left and right. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> I'm it's smashing my card box. It's still together. It's definitely durable. Uh, I may have cut my hand. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, you're a hero. You're just smashing everyone around. But in Arkham Horror, like, you're just getting smashed around. So it's like, they definitely, that's why they have the same DNA. But those are such different feeling card games. It's so weird. Um, so some days, I just love playing Marvel Champions. Net decking a deck. Uh, and playing, setting up a scenario. Playing through it a couple times. Walking away, forgetting about it, having a good time. Or even the campaigns. Play through like four scenarios, you're done, you walk away, it's a great time. This game, uh, I love getting back into it, but the rough stuff is still there. The whole idea of deck building, not my jam, but you can net deck, you can tweak, figure things out. Um, but the idea of like taking a deck, playing a scenario, and then you want to play the next scenario right away, but your deck might totally fall flat for the next scenario and then you have to stop and go like build a new deck and maybe play that next scenario another day that kind of annoys me that's the only thing i didn't really like about this one so i have to go into it knowing i'm only going to play one scenario today because we only have the decks ready to handle one scenario of course when your card pool gets big enough in this game you can build decks that handle almost every scenario all the time kind of thing but that costs thousands of dollars to do that so um but yeah so i like this game if i'm just like i want to take it serious we're going to Face one challenge, we're gonna tweak decks, it's all good. Arkham Horror is like, if I'm playing that, I'm in the mood to like, let's get serious, I'm gonna focus on that game for like a couple months while we go through a campaign. That's a whole different experience. So it depends on the day, but I love them all for each thing they do, and they're all amazing, and I see why Fantasy Flight Games picked the cooperative card game to slap the Marvel license on and take it seriously, rather than putting it on a competitive card game or something like that, um, because it's their bread and butter, man. These games are so well done, Nate French's DNA of building these game, this game system, and then Caleb and MJ and all the other people at Fantasy Flight, Jeremy, uh, all these guys that work on these games, uh, these in the card game group that do the whole um, living card game stuff, making these competitive games, making them feel different, even though they're like the same, uh, is just amazing. And I can own them all and play them all. It's hard to follow them all, that's the problem. But hopefully me playing them all casually shows them off enough so people learn about them because i love these experiences they're great lifestyle games diving into them you can spend years getting in these deep rich communities and worlds and having a good time 
Just pick whichever one has the gameplay hook or the IP that appeals you to you the most. I love fantasy, love Lord of the Rings, hooked. Uh, I love horror. I am new to the whole Lovecraftian horror, little weird, but uh, it's unique and I like it. And then, uh, yeah, I like comics. I'm more of a DC guy. I wish it was a DC <laughs> champions. But, uh, Maybe an expansion in the future? Uh, I don't know if that'll ever cross over unless oh. Disney buys you know, DC Comics or something. Mm -hmm. But um, there have been crossovers in comics and games before because of uh, that license, them working together and stuff. But I doubt that. But anyways, but I like Marvel Champions for what it is. It's fun. I understand. I watch the Marvel movies and stuff. I've read a bunch of the Marvel comics. I love X-Men. Uh, eventually those will be in the game, I hope. But uh, I understand the comic theme very much. I grew up with comics from being a little kid and all that stuff, watching you know the X-Men cartoon and Batman and all this stuff. So I know comics, so that theme relates to me heavily. Uh, I can understand it very good. But yeah, Arkham is the one that's the newest to me, but I still, I still love it. I love what they're doing with it. It's great. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is Marvel. So I got DC is slacking, but I don't know if it's DC. It's just like... Yeah, we have that DC deck building garbage game, uh, which sucks. But like, I understand why, like, you know, Fantasy Flight Games or Asmodee chased down the Marvel license. It's like Disney took that over and blew that up. So it's like, you need a company better than Warner Brothers or something that comes to buy, grabs DC and blows it up and makes it the thing. Like, it, you can't just go off Batman and Superman and Justice League. Not enough. Marvel just has way more popular properties that the movie industry and TV just took it to the next level and made it more mainstream. So people relate more. There's more money on the table there. So if I'm a game company and I want to make an awesome game, hmm, am I going to use the Marvel license, which seems that Marvel just gives it to anybody. You want to make a pair of card sleeves and put Marvel art on it? Yeah, no problem. We'll sign that you're approved. Like, we don't even know you. Sure. Everyone gets a Marvel license. It's like they're handed out like candy. Uh, DC, I don't know. I don't know how they do that. And maybe there's not enough there and... Yeah, maybe people, um, maybe there's just not enough money there for them to waste their time on a game and, you know, not have enough people buying it, I guess. I don't know. Not sure. Yep. I don't know what it needs. They keep just making Batman movies over and over again, but it, that's not enough to, you know, boost it up to crazy Disney Marvel levels. Because the DC Cinematic Universe did not work. Or at least their last attempt at it. Dan says, Rob, I'm uh, more of a DC guy. Dan, unsubscribed. And fired himself from the marketing manager. Well, that's all I had <laughs> to do. That's all I had to do. That was oh, easy. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure we can uh What else don't we you can like, Dan? someone else. Yeah, what else don't you like, Dan? I'm going to like all that stuff you say. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have opened myself up like that. <laughs> I don't want to hear what he's going to say. I should probably end the stream before he starts typing. Anyways, thank you all for watching. No, Kanji, I know the Kang, Once in Future Kang scenario. That's why I kept saying there are scenarios and there are campaign boxes that are way more difficult in Marvel Champions. But in general, starting off with the, the core box, core box to core box, first few expansions to first few expansions from all three games, I'm keeping the new player in mind. New player in mind. No new player is going to grab the Once in Future Kang as their first expansion after the core set. I hope not. But uh, yeah, I was thinking new stuff in mind. Comparing that difficulty wise. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to get out of here. That was way quicker than I anticipated. Like I said, I thought we'd be playing this scenario uh, two times, maybe three, but we beat it. Awesome. Awesome. So stay tuned. Next episode will be put in the playlist link down in the video description or just subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications. You'll see it pop up in your subscription feed. Or if you have notification notifications enabled on your mobile device, that one that does like audio calls. Uh, which I was surprised. You can also get notifications on there uh, when we go live and you can join us. Uh, but tomorrow we're back playing Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles. Uh, Tuesday, back playing Final Girl and hopefully Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle-Earth, another Fantasy Flight Games Lord of the Ring board game. Uh, we're continuing our campaign of The Haunting of Dale on Tuesday, hopefully, if Kyle can make it. Uh, and we'll be playing more of this later in the week and other games and stuff, so stay tuned to the channel. And thank you everyone for hanging out, watching live, chatting in the chat. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you to our Patreons and YouTube members for supporting us, uh, helping invest in the channel, in the collection of games we play on the channel, in the equipment, and in hopefully traveling to conventions in the future. 
I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.